Hey, Max, what is up? Like, I know you've switched up your wardrobe and all this stuff, but is this hat now a part of the uniform? Like, like I, I'm, am I going to have to send a letter to Thelke, BT, about getting some associated stuff put on this hat? I don't know. I I believe the contract states this is okay. I'm not 100% sure what it... I, I can't remember, but I think this is okay. I, I'm going to have to have a talk with BT. Un, inappropriate uh, headwear. Not a, not approved associated headwear. Um, you can't be doing that. And you have to have... I, I believe they'll make an exception when it's me. <laughs> there you go. Well, you won a race, so there you go. Um, <laughs> you're, you're the number one AE guy yeah. in, in Finland right now. What's up, Max? We're back. Yeah. We're recording a podcast. Uh, yeah, we got some things to talk about. Not much, but we got some things to talk about. So, you know what? I say we just uh, drop that intro. Nitro is the glory. Welcome to the No Name RC Podcast with your host tonight, Keenan White, aka Lefty the Great. And if you are unlucky, the Finnish village idiot, JQ. This is the RC Podcast with no name, but plenty of content. So sit back, relax, and get ready for some serious bench racing. Yes, 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 indeed. Nitro is the glory, but e buggy pays the bills. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to episode number one three six of the No Name RC Podcast. I'm your host, Keenan White, aka Left the Great, and over to my left on real in real life, right on the screen, is Max Mort of Associated. Don't get that hat twisted. He he does when he does associated, unapproved associated headwear, by the way. And um, <laughs> there we go. What's up, Max? How you doing, man? I'm doing good. I'm just chilling. It'll probably be a race this weekend, but it'll most likely be canceled due to the rain. Mm. So I'm kind of like I'm 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 kind of like I don't want to go because it seems like it's gonna rain anyway. So I hope they cancel it before. I thought I'll rain doesn't stop and, races and in Europe. Through. What happened? Uh, I don't know. We ra- when it's like mid mid race, then we just race. But when it's like before the race, then we just don't start. Okay. Usually, if it's like if it's like mid main, we just run it. No, I mean no stopping. All right. Well, we'll talk about that and more after I do my intro. Here, um, yeah, welcome number episode number one one thirty six. Everybody, we're getting there. We're almost at the one fifty. Fourteen away from one fifty, if my math is correct. Our guest this week is Mike Mayberry from High Tech RCD. They are a sponsor of the podcast. So we decided to get Mike on her to talk to him about his time in the industry. He's been there for 20 years, 25 years, I believe he has. So he has some stories to tell. And thank you to him for coming on. And thank you to High Tech for sponsoring the podcast. Also, shout out to all of the NNRC squad around the world. Without you guys, we can't do this. Uh, thank you. Our Facebook's almost at 4,000 likes. Uh, thank you, everybody. I think we're like... 30 away no 21 away from that so if you haven't liked the facebook page please go and hit that like button over there also on our instagram we're, we're getting more you know every day we get well, every couple of days instagram's a hard nut to crack just like youtube so check follow us on instagram uh if you haven't already go on over to our youtube channel and hit that sub notification button and like or dislike button and leave a comment uh, go ahead. Also for Max, uh, do that for Max March channel. You got. I was told you got to make your channel art a, lo- a little bit better too. And also one thing I I, f- I forget to ask people is like leave reviews. Um, if you're listening to this on Apple Podcasts or something like that, leave a review. Let us know how you liked it or you disliked it. It helps the algorithms that uh, to get things going. Shout out to all the patrons of the podcast. Thank you guys. Without you guys, none of this is possible. Uh, we can't do it. You guys keep the help these bills being paid. You help me got that nice boat. Oh, 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 shucks. Uh, oh, okay, that boat back there. That uh, it's ready, but I'm gonna talk about that in a bit. So thank you guys. If anybody wishes to support the podcast any further, the link for Patreon can be found in the link tree uh link in the written description. So I have all everything to do with the podcast, all these all the sponsors. 
Patreon, IG, website, all that stuff is all under one link in the written description. Just click it and you, it'll take you to... It's Linktree, man. It's awesome. I like it. I don't know why I haven't used it all this time. Um, And thank you to our sponsors. We actually have a new sponsor and it's Donathan RC. Uh, he came on... He was on the podcast in episode 134. He's making quality, quality, uh, really customizable leads. I mean, I've had him on the podcast before, but when I really dug in deep and was... And started customizing these leads. I was like, wow, he goes deep. Like, you can choose different, she different sheathing, different heat, heat shrink, logos, all this type of stuff. It's I didn't realize that it was the customizing of leads was, was so popular. So I ordered me a few and freaked out on them and went all crazy. Uh, some He's got these nice, cool um, magnetic uh, phone cables that I ordered for me and, and, and I ordered for my wife. And... um. I appreciate Donathan and RC for coming on. Zach's a great guy. Like I said, he's an on rare guy. And you guys, if you can, go show them some love. Uh, you, I think you get 10% off of, over all orders of $50. And you'll be like, well, how do I spend money on, on the cables at $50? You'll see. You get customizing these cables. And wow, but they're really great cables. I've heard nothing but good things about them. I'll be trying them out, charging up my batteries for my new boot and all that stuff. So good stuff. Um... Shout out to Mayako. We're going to talk about that too here in a little bit. Uh, Mayako is a proud sponsor of the podcast, has been for a long time. Beach RC, we can't do without you guys. Thank you, Beach RC. TNR Fuels, made by racers for racers. T Chris is getting ready for the on-road Nats here soon. Shout out to High Tech RC. Obviously, the, the, the guest this week is from High Tech. I'm breathing all heavy here. I'm getting excited. <clears throat> uh, JQ Racing, shout out to all my JQ Racing family. Techno RC. Sun City RC Raceway, they got a race coming up. USRC and Ryan Lutz are going there on the 14th of August. If you're in the El Paso area, go check them out and go to that race. Lugs Racing Tires. Lugs Racing Tires has over 55 years of combined experience. They've been testing treads, wheels, and rubbers for performance. They have the Econ Tires that are developed with racing budgets in mind. High quality, but lower cost means savings that can be passed on to you, the racer. They also have their premier line of tires that is, used, that is made for performance using Lugs custom molds and proprietary rubber compounds to give you tires available in medium, soft, super soft, mega soft, and now they have long wear. So go to www.lugsracing.com, use the promo code NNRCLUGS in all caps, and you'll save money on your order. And you know what? That's in the written description too. So thank you to Lugs. Thank you for them. Manscaped.com. Manscaped.com has been with us for a year, so that's great. Thank you to everybody that's been showing Manscaped some love. Uh, obviously, you guys have been showing them enough love, and you've gotten into manscaping because they've been continuing and on the, the partnership that we've created with them. So thank you to everybody that supported them. And um, thank you to Manscaped. Papa Willie's Traction Tonic, one of our longtime sponsors. We have promo codes for that. You save 10% off that. Go visit them. Spend some money. Obviously, Donathan RC, Racecraft USA. We have a promo code for that, too. All this is in the written description. Thank you to Racecraft USA. They just the new mini command module out. Looks great. RCGP and House of RC. All right, Max. Uh, thank you to all of our sponsors. Thank you to everybody that shows the sponsors some love. We greatly appreciate it. Helps out the podcast. And if you guys can save some money, you can too. Remember that affiliate link in Beach RC helps us out as well. And I want to say happy birthday to a couple of stars. Uh, Joe Zaire's birthday was last week. My buddy AE Boy, his birthday was on the 11th. There's a lot of July babies here. And as I tell Wally and I tell Mark's happy birthday to Wally, his birthday was the 25th and Mark Santa Maria, his birthday was yesterday. And as I messaged Mark Santa Maria and I told him, you're two days shy of pure greatness. And that's me and born on the 29th like me. But um, happy birthday to those guys, man. Um, I want to talk about Mark Santa Maria a little bit more because he's doing something cool. But yeah, we got that done. I'm all excited and I'm out of breath now. But um, yeah, Max, uh, nothing going on for me. We didn't really do a, we didn't, we were supposed to record a podcast last week, but we didn't because we did a live and it actually turned out to be a pretty good podcast. So we just put that up. I think people enjoyed it. And um, that was over the Driven episode, the episode three of Driven. If you haven't seen that, go check it out. It's pretty good. And nothing much, man. I'm kind of been chilling. I got my Oxidine Marine boat all ready for its maiden voyage. Hopefully I don't sink it. It's supposed to be un not unsinkable, but it's supposed to be able to, once you flips, it's supposed to be able to right itself because a chamber floods and then it doubles, like turns over. So 
Probably depends. The river's a little dirty because we've had some rain, so I'm just waiting for that to clear up and to get some time. But yeah, I'm going boating. And you know what? I have a special video for everybody. Everybody's going to get to see. I, you know, I, I got this. I've seen this video over and over, and it, br it brought me back to a good time in RC, a good time in my life, man. It was like just doing RC stuff. It was Saturdays. We do RC things in Bermuda. And on Sundays, we go like RC cars on Saturdays. And Sundays, we go do the boat track and do this. So my buddy sent this video from 2003. I had two working arms. arms that's about 100 pounds lighter. 100 and something pounds lighter. And yeah, I look pretty good. I needed some sun, though. So let's have a look at this from some boat racing in Bermuda back in 2003. All gas, man. These are all, there I am, look. Look at that handsome guy. I still don't know what to do. Picked up the boat with the wrong hand. And my buddy Irvin had to help me. That was my first boat. It actually had a 35cc engine in it. And I, I didn't do too well. Boats is a different animal from, from cars. So this is like being filmed with a guy's phone off his TV in his hobby shop. TQ Hobbies, what's up, Abba and Bermuda? There's Abba right there. Oh, is that Abba? Yeah, that's probably Abba. Oh, that's Derek. Wow. These are all guys is, I chat like, to. This is like peak RC content. Like really old, nitro. No, this like, is this, gas. This is Gasoline. Oh, gas? Yeah, oh, okay. these are like liquid cooled. Uh, let me turn it down a little bit. These are, oh, you can hear the thick Bermudian accents in the background too. Yeah. <laughs> this is, um, these are all gas powered, like two stroke gas powered, water cooled, weedy the engines. And they are boats long. are really freaking fast. Huh? Bo boats are crazy fast. Boats are crazy fast. Oh, this like isn't nothing. Boats. You gotta see like a twin nitro rigger go around on a circle. It's amazing. Oh yeah, yeah, I've seen those. That. That's 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 what I'm but talking I about. I cut out. I cut out and um Yeah, Hermie, that's probably me cutting out right there. But <laughs> the only thing about boats is that once they get once there's no tire marshal. So once they flip, you gotta swim out there. And go get it. I tell you my story how I'm, that I, I was drawn. Well, I didn't was drawn, but I definitely was. It was definitely sh a little bit sketch. Because <laughs> I'll tell you what, if you see, I'm sorry, I'm going on a tangent here, but if you see where those boats are going out in the out there, when there's a drop, mm -hmm. it goes from like, yeah, it, it, it can be like high tide, maybe the water will come up to your, to your hair at the most. Low tide, it can be down by your knees. But then once you go off that drop, it's like psh, the abyss. You know what I'm not deep. Yeah. It's deep. And there's like a there's like a current there too, right? Mm, yeah, because well, so anywho, so I, I I'm out at the boat track one day by myself, testing. Just got this two hundred dollar prop, so I'm gonna test. So my boat caught out in the in the shallow part. So I'm walking out there to get it with my radio. I think I'm gonna make it there in time. And then the wind's just taking it. I'm like, shit. No, you're trying to walk a little faster in rocks. This isn't beach. This is rocks and stuff. So, and I got my radio in my hands. I'm walking. The water's getting deeper. So I'm like getting to the water where I'm like, okay, I'll go hold my radio up like this. And I get right to the edge and the boat is like, like, I'm just going to go over <laughs> to the other side of the harbor. Forget you, Keenan. And I'm like, do I walk all the way back there and drop my radio off? Or do I try to swim out there, get this boat with one hand, holding my radio above my, my head like this, and swim back into the air? I did it. I was out there swimming with the wow. radio up above my head. Then I got to the boat, and I'm pushing it. And then I finally got back where I could walk, and I walked it back in. And I didn't get my radio wet. So, wow. I mean, that, that's pretty. That's great, actually. That's really difficult to do. Yeah. And I had two arms back then, so it was not too bad. Yeah. Not too yeah, bad. Yeah, but like even with two arms, it's it's really bad. Like really hard to do. But it like was fun, man. And... It was fun, and I'm excited to go have some fun with this boat. I've never done electric boats. These boats are super fast. Oh, and those are crazy. You know they like I'm not. They it's just I can't wait to go out there. I hope I don't break it. I did break Lucas's yeah. ten scale at Beach RC when I went there on the first lap. <laughs> I felt really bad. I struck a wall. Um, <laughs> hit a wall. Yeah, I car. jumped right into a wall. You know, you know. I'll, I'll have, now. I have to tell this story. Like I was, I was, uh, I was driving at the track uh, uh, a few weeks ago, probably. I was just doing like one, one uh, battery because I was close by. So I did a one battery, and then like Beck was there, and he was like, "Hey, I, I want to try." And I, I let him drive my car. He drove like three laps, and then he jumped it into the driver's stand. Like it's a ten scale. 
indoor track. Mm-hmm. He jumped the car into the driver's stand. He was he was just wanted to try my car. Why does that always happen? I I don't know why. Well, but. Mike was driving Lucas's car. Then I took it and he. I need a radio with a lanyard. Like I can't drive without a lanyard. So I was like holding the radio on the driver's yeah. stand and trying to drive it, and I just couldn't do it. Like, and I jumped, and I was like, "Oh, hold on, there's no that jump is too close to bam." Okay, I just hit it, <laughs> and I was like, "Lucas, I think I broke your car." No, you didn't break it. Oh yeah, you broke it. I was like, "I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm so sorry, so sorry." Don't let me drive your car. I'm gonna break it. No, that I've never really driven ten scale on um that type of surface at all. I'm only driven it on astro yeah. turf. So. I don't know, but you know what, Max? Before we go on any further, um, let's pay some bills because you know this podcast is brought to you by Manscaped. We just talked about them, how great you guys are doing, and you know supporting us with with uh, with Manscaped. Um, and we greatly appreciate their support, and they're just advertising their new performance package 4.0 for the summer because it's summertime. And are you ready to unveil your beach bod? I know I am. I'm all about that beach bod. I'm about rawness. You know what I mean? There's no fine edges here. It's all about being round or square. So, yeah, Manscaped has got you covered because, you know, you can't be going out to the beach in your bikinis and all that stuff if your junk, all the, you know, all this jungle poking out all over the place. So they've got you covered with the new Performance Package 4.0, which includes the Lawnmower 4.0. Now, I've been using this Lawnmower 4.0, and it's really, really good. I must say, it really, really is, really is good. So join the other 2 million men worldwide that are manscaping and pick yourself up one of these performance package 4.0s. I do believe they are now delivering to Europe. Why should you get the new lawnmower 4.0? Well, this fourth generation trimmer features a new cutting edge ceramic blade to reduce grooming accidents. It's got this new advanced, well, it's not new. They've always had it, but they're always tweaking it. This new advanced skin safe technology. Trust me, I have tried to hurt myself and I haven't. (laughs) I've done some super (laughs) aggressive manscaping and I haven't. And I've used it on all parts of my body and it works great. I mean, maybe not the best thing you want to know, maybe too too much information for everybody, but yeah, check it out. So you know what, guys? Mm -hmm. Chill out. Go check out Manscaped, you know, and they sent us this cool new gift that we got right here that I want to show. Woo! You know what, people? www.manscaped.com. Use the promo code no name in all caps. Save 20% off your order and you get free shipping worldwide. Cut through the jungle to find your madhood. Thank you, Manscaped. Your balls will thank you. Max, we got to get you a performance package. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. But I, need- I mean, I won't be getting rid of the mustache, though. That'll, that's the... We definitely got to do something about this hair, though. I don't know. All right, Max. I don't know. I get, I, I'm going full Jesus. Oh, gosh. Okay. That's going to be interesting. <laughs> that's going to be interesting. You you was like mad hatter. I was <laughs> looking at some pictures from uh, RCGP, and you, your hair was just so wild. Like, I was like... Oh, yeah, Philippines. Oh, man, so it was uh, wild. Like, the moisture was so high, so it, it stayed sort of, like, wavy. Yeah, it was definitely humidity, and it was just, like, your hair was just frizzy, frizzy, frizzy. It looked like you stuck your finger in a yeah. socket or something. All right, Max, so <laughs> what about you? I saw you did some testing this weekend. Yeah, I went back to testing. I've been doing, actually, you know, like, the thing is, like, because I don't have any track close by, mm-hmm. I've had six practice day the whole year. Of anything, six mm. practice days of anything this the whole year. So, it's it's really not a lot. Uh, luckily, I've somehow made the most of it, and I've improved my setup to where I actually feel really comfortable with the car. Surprisingly comfortable, considering the, the like lack of practice days, really. Mm. But like now, the last two weekends, I went three two days in the last uh, the week before, and now one day this weekend. So I've had some good practice. What is it that you're me. exactly making good. changes on your car? What changes are you making? Mostly on the rear end. The front end's been staying the same. I, I feel like the <laughs> A front end is good. So I, I feel what Mugen lacks in steering associated has made it better. But okay. for, some, for some reason, I can't get the rear end sort of... Well, in the past, I couldn't, have, I couldn't get the rear end just the way I wanted it to. What are you looking for? More I'm stability so- in the rear end or for more... What are you trying to yeah, achieve? Yeah, so basically, basically, I'm trying to find the best balance between corner speed and rear end grip. Mm-hmm. Because, like, if I wanted the rear end to be really stable and have good grip, I'll uh, then lose in corner speed. So I've been trying to sort of find a way to keep the corner speed 
and then make it more stable. Basically, just keep low toe and uh, uh, shocks leaned in and trying to keep sort of the stability in the rear end. Mm, okay, got you, got you, got you, yeah. got you. So the possible race that you will have this weekend is where? Uh, in Turco. It, it's it's the track I've been practicing the last few weeks, just okay. uh, sort of getting set up into. I mean, that track was one of the roughest tracks I've ever... Well, not, not actually, it's not that rough, but it's like super high grip and really like sharp bumps. Mm. So it really grabs your car really easily. So it's really difficult. One of the most difficult tracks I've ever been to. Okay, um, sweet. And uh, how many more races do you have left in the summer, approximately? Uh, two two races if this race happens. Uh, yeah. We have two down, two to go. It's gonna be a very I mean, we short. might have some club races. Yeah, yeah. Well, a national yeah. series short, but you can do some club racing. And then what? It's just yeah, ten yeah. scale after that. Once winter kicks in. Yeah, yeah. Mostly, mostly ten scale. But I'll try to get some practicing in the autumn. Uh, we might get a track close by where I live. Uh, it's it's already starting to get built, but it's like it might take a while still. So mm. I hope I'll have the track so I can practice, uh, do some testing. I did that last fall. I just went like every week. I went to the track three times, like mm. two days in a on a week, then once in a weekend, trying to get sort of set up, find found. And I think that's really worked for me this year because like when I started the season, my setup was almost like figured out. Only small tweaks. Got you. All right. Other than <clears throat> other than RC, what have you been up to besides your work, in it? I guess. Like, there's no yeah. like chance of you going to any international races or getting out of the country to go do anything or No, no, at the moment no. Like the code regulation is still a bit a bit sort of strict where you have to get a test every way, every which way you go. Mm-hmm. And it, it might cost a few hundred euros in, gotcha. say, gotcha. Germany. So it's like you pay flights, you pay hotels. I mean, that's not that expensive. But then you pay the tests both ways. That's like uh, 500 bucks. Yeah, it's not, like that, it? yeah, I mean, it depends. Some countries don't require it. Some countries offer it for free. But some countries just require you to buy a test. And yeah, I I ain't, I ain't paying 200 bucks just for a test. I know it's expensive. No. I paid fifty bucks for mine. Her, I think. <clears throat> yeah, in so, Finland it's all free, so it's great. But oh, well, I can nothing's free here. But I can I can literally get a test. I can, I should, probably shouldn't even say this on here. I'm not, but I can get a test without getting. I can get an okay test without getting a test on her if I wanted to. That ain't a problem. Yeah. So yeah, um, that's the third world for you. I know. That's why I love it, daughter. Open air corruption. I can live with <laughs> it. Uh, <laughs> All right, man. Correct. Wow. Just before we go on to anything, any any RC news, I wanted to touch on something which I thought was pretty cool. Uh, Mark Santa Maria is having a summer camp, uh, so you know he's really RC summer camp. So he's he's, yeah. he's blowing up on YouTube. You know, um, it's great what he's doing. I'm a, I'm really hoping how that, many, that how many subscribers does he he's have? He's got like sixty six like thousand. He's like you know yeah. in the whole scheme of YouTube. It's, it's, I mean, I'd love to have 6,000 subscribers, you know what I mean? But 66 yeah. is really good. Um, like, I think after 100,000, it's like when you can start really, you know, but I like what Mark's doing. I mean, you can live, like, depending on the amount of views, he yes. could probably make a living off of YouTube alone. Yes, but I think he would need more. And I, I think he has a good job anyway. Yeah. Yeah. But, but it depends on the views, though. Right. Like, if right. he has like 1,000 views every video, it's like, yeah, no, no way. But, no, he no, has, he has like more than that. He has more than that. Yeah. But he's doing some sort of I'm actually gonna have him on her to talk about. He's been super busy. But um he's been doing uh he's doing an MSN summer camp at the Traxis Traxis building, because you know he's really affiliated with Traxis. So I believe you pay and people got like yeah. a Traxis slash that they had to build. And like they taught him how to build them properly. And you know, it was it was pretty cool, man. And um that's awesome stuff. Like, and I applaud anything like that. Uh <clears throat> I think Slash is a great class for people to get into. We need more of it, and we need to keep it as stock as possible, not ruin it by making, like, two-wheel drive or four-wheel drive. And, um, yeah, I just think, like, things like that are great. Like, a basic summer camp, teach people how to how to do things and uh, go from there. Like, I always say Mark Sampteria is, like, the welcome door for these, these basher guys who are, like, on the cusp of bashing and racing. And yeah. I think he bridges that gap 
a lot. And uh, it's super important, man. It's super important for, for that for that because we need that you know we still need that we need we need you know we, we're all ambassadors but yeah i think that's pretty cool a summer camp i think that's awesome i think that's yeah. awesome oh yeah everything everything like just to make our shit cooler and improve it it's i'm i'm all for it yeah but, uh, because he called in on our last not our live but a live a couple of weeks ago i think it was and um he uh he said you know he said, yeah, it's just amazing. People still don't even know what, like, what we're doing as race. And I said, I know. I, it isn't amazing to me. I just know how it is because I have so many people ask me, like, what? You do this for a living? I'm like, yeah. So I understand that 100%. Well, congratulations. Check that out. I think I saw it. He's on his Instagram, and I'm sure he's going to have some video up about it. So, yeah, good stuff to him. And uh, great job, man. Great job. Kudos to you. All right, Max, I think it's time to go into some RC news. I was scouring for news. It ain't much. A lot of racing going on in Europe, so we'll touch on that. But this week's news is brought to you by High Tech RCD. High Tech RC is a leader in RC systems, delivering the highest performance and reliability supported by a dedicated customer service personnel. The HSB 9381TH servers have efficient brushless motors, titanium gears, low consumption, constant output, and a metal case. The RDX2 Pro Charger, which I probably need to pick one up for myself because I need a new charger, can charge two four-cell packs in, packs in just 45 minutes and provide power for your engine heating and tire warming needs. Trust in high tech, your server and charger, charger headquarters. Visit www.hightechrcd.com where to buy it to, and click on the where to buy link and you will find your nearest dealer thank you high tech for showing the podcast some love and uh show them some love too everybody and thank you mike for coming on all right max so i had made notes yesterday then we saw what happened so all right let's just let's just address the elephant in the room because i don't know all the details but wally's out at mayako i talked to wally um you know this is the big thing reverberating from yesterday uh i'm kind of disappointed with this because i kind of was looking forward to working with wally to it at like an extent with that but i i kind of man it's it's business it is business and it's business and that's that's about all i know about this like talking to wally talking to thing i think they i think wally kind of wants to focus on wally builds which is growing and was real busy because he just moved into a, a a bigger you know he's moved into a full-time shop and all that type of stuff and I just think like, yeah, maybe he's just, I, I get it. Like when, when you work in RC like this, like what, what, like what Wall is doing, that's his living. Like, like this, this is my living too. You know what I mean? But he's yeah. right there in the thick of it. And I guess you just have to do what's best for your business at the end of the day. You know what I mean? Um, I don't know all the details about what's happening. I, my phone was like, bing, 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 bing. And I was like, I'm not even involved with this. I didn't end up like people say, like, what happened? I was like, what are you talking about? Then I saw it on Facebook. I was like, what the hell? Like, he, he was one hour. He was like, oh, I'm building some new cars. And then an hour later, it's like, I'm out. And I was just like. That yeah, was, that was weird. That he, was weird. He posted, like, he posted on, I, I believe he posted on Tuesday, like, yeah, getting ready for the weekend. And then on, like, Wednesday morning. No, no, Tuesday he, posted, evening, he, posted, he like, posted on the day. And then, like, an hour later, it was nothing. Because I remember Greg was talking yeah. talking shit on there. So, I don't know what I, I just talked to Wally. He says, it's nothing personal. It's business. I got to focus on Wally builds and do that. And maybe, maybe what Mayako needed from him, like, like I know they kind of want him, like I, like from what I can tell, it's like they want him to be the, the, he was supposed to be the guy, like, you know, the face of Mayako or similar like that. And to be something like that, to be a team manager and all that stuff, man, people just don't understand the amount of, I guess that would have been like a team manager type of thing. People just don't understand the amount of commitment and, um, work that that takes uh to do that you know what i mean like when i well not when i was doing it but i'm still doing it but obviously it's slowed down a lot because of you know jk racing's gotten smaller but um it takes a lot of work man i would be up at two o'clock in the morning talking to some guys you know and i spent many a saturday afternoon maybe talking some guy off a cliff who just had a shitty club race and he was just like i'm done like i'm quitting rc or whatever it's so much stuff involved with being a team manager in RC. I think in anything, 
that people just don't understand the amount of work. And, you know, it takes up, it literally takes over your life, like Richard did for me. Well, for me, maybe I did it the wrong way. You know what I mean? But I, yeah. for, to treat people how I want to be treated, it, it takes that attention. Like I always said, a little bit of attention goes a long way. So it's unfortunate. That's about all I know about it right now. Talking to Wally and Joseph, they said it's business. So I'm just going to leave it at that. It's unfortunate. I wanted to work with Wally, but that's how things go sometimes, man. Just go. Like, just how it works. Like, one minute you could be on top of the world, the next minute you're like, shit. Like, what happened? So good luck to Wally um, and all his endeavors and whatnot, and I wish him all the best. The, 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 the show must go on. Like, you know what I mean? It's pretty simple. Like, like uh, one person getting off the train, don't stop the train. You got the train's got to keep on going once it's going. So yeah, September I think now the release date for the Marco. I can't wait to get my car and uh, put it together and see what happens. All right, let's talk some news. So I think one of the biggest news is, news for me this week was the UK has a really great national series brewing up right now. Johnny Skidmore yeah, beat boots but I again. Mean, yeah, but like last time. It was sort of like Craig's race to lose, and he had a failure in the main. This time was like Boots TQ'd all the rounds, mm -hmm. all four quality rounds. He TQ'd. He started first in the main, mm -hmm. and then Skidmore just straight up beat him. Yeah, there was no straight mistakes. Up. I mean, unless we missed yeah. something. You said you went through all the laps. Yeah, you but didn't it, miss nothing. I went on. I went through all the laps, like unless there was something like a power line came loose, uh, um, fuel sort of what you call it, pressure mm -hmm. line came loose or something. Unless there was something like that, I don't see anything weird in Boots' laps. He even did one of his fastest laps in the end. So it's not like his car went really bad or tires went out or like, I, I just feel like he just made more mistakes than Johnny and Johnny just kept on the wheels. Well, yeah, to be fair, I think Boots has been dominant in this series for many years now. I mean, he probably lost some races. I think Clancy might have beat him. Let's be honest. Like, it was Neil Craig, Boots. Like, like Boots has been dominant the last few years. He probably got inherited this. You had you had Lee Martin. Mm -hmm. You had Bloomfield at his time. Craig still fast. You had all these guys. Boots was next in line. Like, let's be honest for, like, that fast UK guy. He is the fastest UK guy, I would say. Yeah. I mean, I think he won, like, two, three years in a row. Right, or something like right. That. He's been really good at it. But, like, this year, it's been, like, it almost like when I'm, I, I've been looking at the quality times, all that. Like Neil Craig's been looking really good this year. Like first race, he was almost like dominating straight up. Mm -hmm. Then had an issue in the main. This race, he had the speed, like he was matching sort of boots speed. And then in the semi, he had an issue. Mm -hmm. So he's like, he's getting like really, like he's getting the worst end of the stick. Like okay. Here. But boots is sort of just, I don't know what's going on with him, but he seems like. Well, that was a Drake. He ain't Jake. doing too good. Yeah, it, and it, like... Okay, so let's look at a few things. All right, so congratulations to Skidmore. I'm, I'm glad when I see... Oh, yeah. I'm glad yeah. when I see any up and coming. I wouldn't say that. They've been racing for a long time. I don't know how old they are. I even congratulated oh, his dad, oh. and I said, oh, that's what I... Because I am a fan of seeing a good series. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and I'm a fan of seeing... Uh, these young guys going after, even though Boots is not old, but you know, Boots is the guy. But let's be honest, like Boots in eight scale, Boots is the guy yeah. in in pretty much in England, I would say. In the world, when you think eight scale racing, you think Boots from England, you know, England, eight scale racing. So Skidmore's yeah. aren't slow. I mean, Johnny was fast at Montpellier last year. Not last year. Yeah, last year. Yeah. And yeah, but like, even then, like, this is still a really good performance mm -hmm. for them because in previous years, he's been, I think he's won a national round once in a while. But, like, having, like, two national wins in a row and, like, not even getting lucky or anything. And even, like, William being there, too. Like, they're being, like, they're mm -hmm. both guys have podiums from each races. So, even that's impressive, too. So, like, they're, all, all what they're doing is working pretty good for them. So, I mean, yeah. Well, it's a good group all, of young guys I mean, in all, England that are racing now, too. And yeah. they, they want to win. Yeah. So. Yeah. Oh, um, yeah, no doubt. They have a great championship route. Now, let's look at Boots. Um, I think... So the big change for Boots this year, he went to T Pro Tires from Pro Line to T Pro Tire. Big change. Yeah, I, I, I mean that could be an issue. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if that was the issue. But mm -hmm. T Pro Tires aren't really bad per mm -hmm. se. I don't feel like they are. Maybe so just not the selection like, I mean, that Pro Line has. 
I mean, it could be, and it could be just that they don't work that well in oil tracks. I Maybe. mean, whatever it is. Maybe. Whatever it is, but like, uh, I feel that could be an issue. I think this was track was Brookthorpe. Brookthorpe's oiled, I believe. Yeah, this this wasn't oiled, but it was sort of like weirdly done. I, I can't remember. I, I spoke with Dresha. He said they treated it weirdly and no one really liked the grip level. It's really inconsistent. That's what I need to get on this podcast. It's Craig Dresher. Thank you for reminding me that. Yeah. Um, I think this is Rowan the Barbarian's uh, home track. He sends me pictures all the time. So. It's a nice track too, by the way. Um, Vary was there, so it looks like like Vary is definitely gonna be his traveling mechanic. I mean, oh yeah, no doubt. Like he was in the first round as well. So yeah, so he's been there. Uh it it's it's gonna take some time, but are, or are we seeing the changing of the guard somehow, some way? You know, are the Skidmore's gonna I mean, go at it? Like, are I mean, they, is Johnny gonna go be, after Boots? But I, I'd say like Skidmore is definitely on a run, no doubt, and all like all praise to him for that. But I still feel like sort of boots, it's boots still struggling. Mm. Like all the other guys, like Skidmore beat him straight up, like all the other guys in the main, like mm. he's but I still feel boots is the number one. He's just having sort of a struggle at the moment. Could be tires, could be just not feeling the tracks, been racing in Italy for a while, mm-hmm. needs to get used to the UK tracks. It, whatever it is, but I feel like that's just uh, that's the sort of the most of it. I feel. Yeah. But, I mean, yeah. I could be wrong. We could it be. Just I be mean, that Skidmore and UK guys are getting faster and faster. Could be. I, I mean, the Skidmore's always pretty good. It seems like they've done really good no, since yeah. on Mugen. So, um, good stuff. Congratulations to the Skidmore's. Even though I don't see eye to eye with their dad all the time. He, you know, they're 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 a good race. I maybe I need to get them on the podcast to talk to them. But definitely Drasher and yeah. So congratulations. It's good to see. It's just good to see that, like a good yeah race series going on. And you know to, to determine. And you know what? Darren Bloomfield is back. He's racing. I heard again. that. Why well, he was on the podcast? He's racing an AE. Yeah, I know. Yeah, he's racing an AE. He's he's finished. I think fourth this round and. He was in like top six last round or something. Yeah. He finished pretty high. Yeah, up. I had a great chat with Bloomfield last year, I think, or might have been twenty nineteen. So I have to find. I'll find out. Bloom Bloomfield's fast, like Bloom, like. Wow, he yeah. was fast. I mean, that guy. That guy has talent. Like yes. no, like it's not like because it was never like he had the best equipment or the best mechanic or he was sort of a setup guru. He just had talent. He was mm-hmm. amazing. Like you know, remember the Euros he won in two thousand twelve? I do. Was I, I believe I believe he yeah. ran in in fairing, yeah. Was and it I in believe fairing? he ran, yeah, 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 in fairing. It was it was a little different though, right? It, it was run like it was so the the dirt was a lot more moisturized, so it was not like dry like it was the RCD. So it wasn't a track with like the cobblestones and like the paved area. Oh yeah, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was that was and fairing. like Ronafuck was winning for the longest while. Yeah, Ronafog led until like the last. Like, okay, five yeah, minutes. it, it looks completely he, different. He made now. A, yeah, but he made a he made a huge mistake, and then Bloomfield catched up, and then Bloomfield passed him, and Ronafog sort of lost his mm-hmm. concentration. Like he, he Ronafog definitely choked in the end, and that that was his race to lose. But Bloomfield was really fast all week, and what I what I believe was that he ran Drake's car. Because Drake was there, he was um, his mechanic. I think he and said that. From what I heard, yeah, from what I heard, I believe he ran Drake's car. He didn't even run his own car at the Euros. You know, the last time we saw like the Americans going over to help the Europeans was 2018 with Gord and over there for Bruno. Yeah. I really wish we would see more Americans just come over and race. You know what I mean? I would love to see. Yeah, Americans just come up to Montpellier and race the first race of the year. I know it's a hard race, but yeah, I mean they used to like yes. Mayfield used yes. to be there. All those guys like that was great. Like, but the thing is, like the Americans really never did too well at Montpellier. They so I think that's I... why they stopped going. Yeah, yeah. Um, the Euros were like used to the track, they right, used to the weather, right. all all of that kind of stuff. Um, Greg always says all the time, we had to go to the Euro. We had to go over to Europe to get faster. To race those guys back in the day. Yeah. Lots of racing going on in Europe. Lots of racing. I see um the Punisher well, Michael Orlowski won in um won in Poland. That's where Pavel went too. Because we were supposed to record and he's like, Oh, I'm at the track. No. It's like we'll wait till next week. 
Um, <laughs> I saw Ronald Falk race. He actually, Ronald Falk lost in two-wheel drive this week. He won four-wheel drive, but lost two-wheel drive oh, at did? the Nationals. Yeah. Who won, who won two-wheel drive? Uh, I don't know. Probably, uh, probably, uh, I think his name is Elias Johansson. Yes, I don't, yes. I'm not sure. I think him. It was. It was. Um, that's who just, someone just called me. So he came second. I was shocked to see that. Um, yeah, but that's like that's what I've been saying all the while. Like he, he isn't like feeling like strong. You know, he feels like he has those weaknesses. I mean, he has the speed, he has everything in together. But like sometimes he just he doesn't win the races, or sometimes he has sort of those cracks. You know what? Sometimes you just can't win them all. I know I want the Viking to win everything. Yeah, but sometimes you just can't. Yeah. Yeah, I I mean, I mean to be fair, like Sweden has a lot of fast races, so it's not like he's facing no competition. He's facing really fast guys, so mm-hmm. it's not like he should be like dominating all these races. But like he should still be sort of winning. Who it does off, that guy race I for? Feel. Because I think one of his friends might have messaged me telling me about a fast young eight skill, um, ten skill AE driver. Probably was might have been this guy. I can't remember. Yeah, I mess- I mean, Sometimes I get messages and I don't know who they're from, man. And I just my things just go on. I, I, if I don't answer, it's because I just it gets pushed on and I, I don't see it no more. So I apologize. But yeah, lots of racing going on. I Baruflo won this weekend. Um, Europe is like full racing right now. It's, it's good to see, but it's sad that we don't get to see more inter- like them get together and race more. Like, is have you heard anything? Maybe there might be like another big eight scale race coming up where everybody's going. Uh, I haven't heard of anything. There might be a race in Germany, but I, I probably mostly Germans anyway. So, okay. not that I know of. Maybe like Italian Championship is always great because there's like so many fast guys. But the thing is, like in Europe, it's sort of weird because like every country has their top guys, and it's like, like every even like it doesn't matter which country it is. Like every time there's a race in in any country. There's at least one like professional there, mm-hmm. sort of. Because in America, it's sort of like most of the pros are in uh, California or mm-hmm. like Cole is on the East Coast. Most guys are in California. Then Tebow, Lutz, and all those guys are sort of, they don't really go to any big races that are posted online at least, or I've seen. Mm-hmm. They probably go to races a lot, but like it sort of like gets, gets sort of hidden, at least from, from my like <laughs> social right. media bubble. So like European races, it's like when there's always like a Boots or an Ongaro, you always hear about it. Mm-hmm. So that's like sort of the difference in Europe. Because I, I bet there's just as much racing going on in America at the moment. It's oh, it's crazy. We're gonna, I'm going to talk big, about that. There was, uh, I'm going to talk about that after the, I pay some bills. So thank you to TNR Fuels because here at the NNRC, we are all about that glo- the glory and that glory is nitro. TNR Fuels is the hottest nitro fuel in the market, owned and operated by Chris Nelson and his family. Made by racers for racers. TNR Fuels is currently available all around the USA and many hobby shops. If you're interested in getting some, your hands on some TNR fuel or want some more information about it, contact Chris directly at Chris at TNR Fuels or visit them at www.tnrfuels.com and uh, send them a message. Or get on Facebook, send them a message or on House of RC. Uh, check them out. TNR Fuels. The hottest fuel right now out there. Chris is going to the on-road nationals here. It's all about on-road right now. That's coming up here soon too. So thank you to TNR Fuels for your continued support of the podcast. Please show them some love. Um, American racing. There was a lot of racing this weekend. I want to say congratulations to uh, Scale Racing Sports, Josh Garbett. He had a summer sizzler. <clears throat> and I have to say, this looked like he, I'm happy for him. Last year, this race was... I'm going to say it was like almost a disaster because he didn't build the track right and he had to, people weren't happy and he had to give people free entries to his Blue Ridge race, which is like, in, and then on top of the Blue Ridge race, I think Dave put AMS on top of that race. Like it's a big competition to go in. It's, it's not really, I mean, look, Dave puts on the best, probably the best indoor races you're going to get right now. I don't agree with the practice schedule, all that type of stuff, but the effort and the amount of time that goes into doing it, he gives you a he gives you a good track. He gives you you know everything's done properly and all that type of stuff. So, but the summer says a little bit with with Josh Garber. They had about three hundred entries, I think, this week. Um, the track was pretty decent. It was a little bit 
it was big. It was the facility is big. The facility is beautiful. I haven't been across where it's at. It's beautiful. It's up in the mountain, a little bit in the mountains in in Virginia. Uh, he had Scotty Ernst there. He was announcing the race, and they had a live RC there. So they only had one camera. So Scotty was doing all the RD work, and yeah, I'm just happy because this guy kind of needed a race with, you know, like the race is also designed not to have a whole bunch of entries the way the format is. The format's weird. Like you race a race, and then that's your qualifying race. I don't. I don't. He's told me over and over how it works, but I'm the type of person I kind of need to see it. Uh, Mike Hill explained how it works, but it's a different. This like for the way he does it, it's a different format. So kudos to him. Congratulations to them. Uh, looks like everybody that I talked to had fun. There was one thing they were letting guys. Some guys run open and pro. Literally. Like yeah. the guy who was TQ, why, why? the guy, why? one guy who was TQ of open was also third in pro. Like, I don't know how that happened. I don't know how you let, I assume. So what they then made him do was make a decision. Like you can erase your pro class. But I think by that time, the damage already been done because he had already had more time on the track. You know what I mean? Than anybody else. Yeah. So I don't get that. I don't know how that was even allowed to happen, but I mean, there's no rule against it, is there? Really? Yeah, but I mean, that's that's a bit ridiculous. Yeah, so. I, know, I know. Um, so kudos to them. He's got another race coming up at Clemson, and it's gonna do it like he says he's gonna do it like a Euro style track with like different surfaces and stuff like that. So we'll see. Um, but it's good to see it more participation. It was honestly, it wasn't a big race. It, like when I say it wasn't a big race, like had big names at. There was no big names at it. But okay, well. Like when I mean big names, like there was no professional drivers. The guy, Jason Ethan Mechanic, he won it. Northeast racer, he made the main at um the nationals. But um it was like good, like a big like all the southeast people went and some northeast guys, you know, like that whole region they went and he had a good he had a good show and I'm happy for him. So congratulations. Um there was so much other racing going on in America, I can't name it all. But wow, people are racing. Uh, Joey, the dirt, his his track is having its grand opening this weekend. So he's built a track at Paris. I believe it's in on the part of the track where DNC 2019 was, not 2020. So it's on the smaller part of the track, like the smaller part. So he's built a track there. It's like going to have a full facility, like hobby shop and all that stuff. So the first race is this weekend. So all the so Southern California guys that I, I know are going to that. And I guess... Uh, we have the USRC race in the 14th at SCRC. We got the On Road Raw Nationals coming up there in California, which I would love to go to, to be honest. Uh, Wicked Weekend coming up. That's in, wake up, Max. Wicked Weekend coming up. That's one race I want to go to, too, just for the venue because it's awesome. Uh, that's, yeah, like, that's going to be a big race, too, because looks. I was looking at entrance. It's, like, packed. And then, of course, I would say the next big race uh, like big national race is the 10 scale nationals coming up in yeah. um, Gathersburg at the track. I kind of want to go see that too, but uh, yeah, we shall see. We shall so who see are we this. picking? Who are we picking to win? Well, let's do that. I'm not, I, you know what? Uh, I kind of want Mayfield to win. Have. I kind of want Mayfield, to, want win Mayfield to win because then, like, I think if Mayfield can win the offer. Few offer championships, national champions, the E Nats, E National Championships, and the and the ten scale offer championships, like four wheel drive and two wheel drive in one year. I think that's a damn good accomplishment. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, but I'm not no picking doubt. him. I mean, that that would be insane. But the thing is, like, Mayfield has looked really bad in ten scale. He has though. looked very like, bad. In not 10 even scale like. This year. No, he, he, not like oh, he's not the one all the races. He, like B main, mm -hmm. bad. I agree. You know? Like I agree. really bad. So I don't know what's going on there. I mean, no doubt he's going to be in the main. He's going to finish quite high. But I don't see him dominating the ten scale nuts. I feel like he might be good in one class. He might be good in like two wheel drive, or then like really suck in two wheel drive. Be good in four wheel drive. Something like that. I I'm expecting. I I you, who do you think is going to be who do you think is going to be in two wheel drive four wheel drive. I'd say tool drive Rivkin is looking really good. And AE you car say is that like because tool drive. AE. Come on. No, but like, I, I don't, I never say Rivkin is going to win eight scale races, even though he's fast. I'll pick, I'll pick like eight right high. now. I'll pick Aiden Horn over Rivkin. 
No, I mean, still, like, you got a tool drive. I mean, no. Rifkin um, is still really good in tool it's drive. It's going to be interesting. You're going to have a lot of fast guys there, and I think it's still only 10 cars go to the main. There's you know no what, bumps. though? For four-wheel drive, for four-wheel drive, I'm picking Champlain. You, I was, he was in my Depending brain just now. Level. He was in my brain. Yeah, he could win it, this. If it, if it's like semi high grip, like four wheel drive, Champlin, that's my pick. Okay, I'm gonna take. Not Fend. Not picking Fend. I'm going with the goat. The two wheel drive, no, and four wheel no drive. chance. Wow, you heard it. Cab I, mean, will I win think it's two wheel drive soon. and four wheel drive. I'd say next year, I would agree. This year, like, he has to get used to his cars. He's that type of driver. He yeah. needs to get used to his setup, and then he runs the setup when I would track. You know what? We're going to do this. We're going to do this. We're going to have backup picks. <laughs> so you think... You... Let's, do, let's do one through three. Okay. So I, I'd say for tool drive, mm-hmm. it's Rivkin. Then it's... God, this is hard. I know. Maybe no. Testman. Maybe Testman is second yes. in tool drive. Yes. I think he's so is I he said, staying I'd that long though. I I mean, I, I think he'd be going. Assume. It's a national race. He he doesn't have I'd enough time to go to Canada and come back. No. Yeah. So but I I mean the thing is like X ray ten scale, like the four wheel drive is good, but then like t- Testman seems to struggle a lot with four wheel drive at times. So are you looking for the win? That's going to be my pick. But it's hard. Like, Fend could be second. Fend could be challenged for the win. Fend kind of like win CRC, this. RC race. It's five Fend minutes. Could, yeah, he but, can win this. He can be a... I don't think he like, has a national championship, you know, or does he? Like a modified oh, national yeah, championship. Oh, yeah, he has. He, he has. He has. Yeah, I think he has. Okay. Someone, he, I'm sure somebody year, will won say... almost everything. Lefty, you're so dumb. Of course he has national titles in modified. Somebody will let me know about that this week. Yeah. But um... I, Okay, I'll go with this. I'll go with Rivkin, uh, Tessman, and then Champlin third in tool drive. In four drive, I'll go with more risky ones. I'll go with Champlin first, then I'll go with Fenn second, and I'll go with I'll go with Mayfield third. I wonder if Tebow is going to race this. He has done zero ten scale this year. I doubt he races this race. Yeah, but and if he does, he's going to be like fifth. You know, interesting. I forgot all about that. Okay, my picks for two wheel drive: the goat, the fend, Mayfield. If not, if my only person I'm gonna put in there that can interrupt that is Raging Aiden Horn. Yes, I'm a fanboy, but then Cole Tallard's good. Rivkin, He's good too. Ripkin not in top three. No, Come on. He's like won almost every ten scale race this year. He didn't win the exact RC race, ten k that. Aiden Horn won, but he probably wasn't there. Was he there? Might have been there. I can't remember. Yes, he uh, was there. Um, no, I can't throw Rivkin out. It's so hard to pick top three. You know what I mean? And I can't yeah, even. I know. I can't even knock Mayfield out because you never know. He'd be like, you know what? I'm even more determined. Yeah, now the thing to is, like, this. you 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 gotta have Mayfield somewhere. In yeah, there. you can't. He's gonna make the podium in one of the classes. You can't have a top three no. pick without Mayfield in there. Yeah. All right. So in four wheel drive, I'm taking the goat, Fen Mayfield. Same for both classes. Mm-hmm. Just the goat and Mayfield. Mm-hmm. Wow. I'm definitely going for younger. I'm going for like Champlain to win, Rivkin to win. Like you know no, what I want? no goat. I want to a be good, I want a good battle to the third main. That's what I want. Yeah, but then if it's the third main, someone's gonna just take someone out. I mean, okay, believe this. Four wheel drive two wheel drive, it's Rivkin and Fend until like the final lap in the third main. Mm. Like, oh my god. You know that you know what the rivalry like. That's gonna be like the pinnacle of it, like taking one out in the last lap of the Raw Nats. I would love like, to be on. there when that happens. Yeah, I'll be like, and you know what? <laughs> like after that, social media will blow up about this. Like, oh, he took him out. And like, you know he what? I out. am. That is the type of drama I am all for right there. Racing yeah, drama. Yeah, that's what I'm. I'm, for. I'm. I'm thirsting for it. Yeah, me too. I want that drama. I, st- I strive for it. I'll be like. Oh, he took him out, and then I'll be like, as soon as he finished, oh, right up to the driver's stand for when they finish um, <laughs> and see what happens. Yeah. But that rivalry is definitely there, and it ain't going nowhere. I don't think I don't think Fend 
and Rivkin like each other much. And I think they want to yeah, eat each it's other. It's kind of sad that in, in eight scale, they sort of never battle. It's always like Fend and Mayfield. And then Rivkin sneaks in the end of the he main does. sort of. He does. You know? He does. So it's, not, it's never like Fend and uh, Rivkin in the front. I wish it was like Thornhill or something where Rivkin is really fast. <laughs> then it would be like a battle. You know, because Fend is faster too. So it would be like a Fend-Rivkin battle in Thornhill. Well, I don't know. But that's my picks. How about you guys? Who's your guys' picks top three for the Nationals? And um, hopefully if I don't go there, we get to watch it and some good coverage. All right, Max. Any more RC news? Did you see anything this week that piqued your interest that you wanted to talk about before we move on? Not really. Nothing crazy. Nothing exciting, really. All right. Well, we have a few questions from last week when I posted this. So I just kept them, mm-hmm. and I didn't make another repost this week for questions. So we're going to answer this question. It's not many. Come on, guys. Get us your questions. Uh, I know we can't spend the whole podcast answering questions, but w- it would be cool to get some more. So <clears throat> I think we should go on to the Beach RC Bench Racing Q&A. What about you, Max? Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. BeachRC.com, the racer's one-stop online hobby shop. Choose from all the popular brands and variety in stock with super fast shipping and great customer service. BeachRC.com still has the local hobby shop feel with all the benefits of the internet. BeachRC.com is the exclusive distributor for Ultimate Racing, JQ Racing, Pro Circuit Racing Tires, Nitro Lux Fuels, and Assault RC Performance Products. So, fill up your cart and check out at BeachRC.com today. All right. Thank you, BeachRC, for the continued support of the No Name RC podcast. They got the mod race coming out here pretty soon. They're going to be doing the pit party at Wicked Weekend uh, here in a couple of weeks. So that's going to be pretty wild. Um, mod is actually shaping up to be pretty good. They got Scotty in there to call the race. And hopefully they got a few more pro guys going in there. And um, that's a really great 10 scale race too. And they have a lot of fun. So thank you to Beach RC for all the support. If you guys can, there's an affiliate link in the written description of this podcast and in the link tree link. Uh, hit that and, and buy something from Beach RC and help us out too. We greatly appreciate it. All right, Max, we don't have many questions, but our first one is from Charlie Mac. What's up, Charlie Mac? Reckless speculation on the potential dirt. Because you know, Joe is doing that US Open, I think mm-hmm. US championship thing that it's going to do that's i hope he does he said he's going to be doing it for 20 years he's been talking about i hope he does it he he goes which is the ideal track based on location venue size and local amenities good question charlie so if they was if 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 when joey has his his dirt nitro east race where do you think would be the best track to to have this for everybody. If it's if it's existing existing tracks, SMB is one of my favorites there. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'd say that's like if you if you want to go like East Coast East Coast, mm-hmm. I'd say SMB. If you want to go like I really like the track they held the nationals like I guess Southside. in 2018. Yeah, I was thinking that 2018 too. that was outside. Yeah, that that was a cool track. Mm-hmm. Then, I mean LCRC. The track they held the nationals, that's cool too. Mm-hmm. But I'd say SMB and the South Side, those are like one of my favorites I've seen on the East Coast. I think uh I like SMB too. Um, but I think for ease of maybe people just getting to this race from around America, I think in Florida, like it's gotta be either two places, South Side or probably down um at uh Mills Pond. Just because of location, you know, easier to get to. Yeah, but I mean, the thing is, in Flor- the tracks in Florida seem a bit small. No, Mills Pond isn't that know big. Why big. Southside's big, though. Southside's big, yeah, but like most, like like Mills Pond and Mills Pond's a little tracks, small. Tracks I've yeah, tracks I've seen around the area are a bit small. That's why I like SMB. It's like mm-hmm. perfect size from the East Coast. I but, don't know if there's good tracks up north. I'm not. I I never been there. I've been like the North issue Carolina. Is, like, up north, North Carolina. it could only be done in the summertime. So, yeah. Oh yeah, but the nets are always summertime anyway, so it's not like a. No, but this deal. isn't a nationals. It's Joe's. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah Joe's. But I mean, you could do it in the summertime. It doesn't really, doesn't really limit it. Speaking of that, I wonder who's gonna get the national bid for next year. Anyway, I don't know, Charlie. I don't know, man. 
where he'll do it. I know he did uh, the buggy. Him and Miguel did the buggy land thing in Fort Lauderdale, which is at Mills Pond. I don't. I don't think it would be at Southside. I don't think. Um, yeah, yeah. I don't think it's gonna be there. But I want to see SMB though. I really want to see that because that's like that's like real, real East Coast. I feel like that's my sort of what is East Coast racing. Like SMB is like the red dirt, like the Carolina red dirt, like all those. Like track is perfect. Like the driver stand is great. There's enough area for like camping, all that stuff. I just think and getting then, there, like, the flying is, there is hard for people. Like coming from the West Coast Where do you have stuff. to fly? Do you have to fly like... I don't know. It might be that Charlotte's one of the closest it might ones. Be, it might be like Columbia for... Um, yeah, I mean, yeah. For... I mean, it's not that bad. I mean, I mean, it's it's it it's it. You can do it. It's yeah. not like impossible. I I think, I think there's various tracks that can hold it. Um, it's just whichever one wants to do it. Oh yeah, yeah. I don't know which one is the best one, but yeah, I haven't been to them all, so I don't know. All right, good, but good question. Let's see if it happens. Let's see if it happens. I know he's been talking about yeah. this for a long time. I'm all for serious. So, Jacob Barrett, what's up, man? I've been talking to Jacob and get Jacob getting to know him. Nice guy, cool dude. He says, since Ty and Cole got DQ'd from the national race, would they be eligible for the next worlds? I believe Ty is eligible because he's won a worlds. Yeah. Um, yeah, but also like they their end end result is sort of last of yes. the semi. Yes, because they've qualified up to the semi mm-hmm. legally, and then from the semi they went illegally, so they got stuck in the semi. So they finished like, I guess twenty fourth. Like yeah, 23rd, and, 24th. yeah. I think it's a top thirty, maybe forty. Nobody, I can never get a yeah, answer on yeah, this. Yeah, I think I, I think it's top thirty. <clears throat> yeah, but some say it's forty. So I think they're in, yeah. and I think I think Ty would have been in anyway because he's already won it. Yeah, yeah. I and mean, even I mean, let's. I don't feel in America it's like. I think they can make an exception if something like that happens. And not only that, like, I'll be honest, out of those 30 guys or 40 guys, not all of them are going to go travel to Spain if that's where it's going to be next year and go race. Yeah, you know? yeah. So no doubt, there'll be a yeah. lot of people, spaces where people, then they give like a spot where you, where to the next people, if they decide not to go, then they do like a ride in mm-hmm. where you can go in. So, yeah. If this was an American race now, like if this was in America, then you would, <laughs> you would, you bet your boots that everybody will probably be good because it's just easier. So yeah, yeah, yeah I think kind of like I, Vegas. Yeah, like when you they remember had the like the Nats race. in Chico. You remember the Nats in Chico where that was qualifying for Vegas, where Tessman dominated and Wheeler was like second. Oh yeah, that's that's what twenty fifteen. So yeah, twenty fifteen qualifying for the Vegas Worlds. Like at that race, like finishing to qualify for worlds for like mm-hmm. a huge deal because everyone wanted to go obviously mm-hmm. it's vegas yeah and then they had a qualifying races to get into the worlds at vegas. yeah yeah that's true yeah right. i remember those it was kind of weird i didn't i mean i don't think we should have that but i mean good that people got to run the worlds yeah all right um so we have some instagram questions hyperfox 2.1 <laughs> i love this guy's name Hyper F U X X two point one. He's too savage too. He doesn't like you too much. He says you gotta get a haircut. Me? Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, people say that all the time, but I don't really care. I know you don't care. I'm. What I'm says. <laughs> yeah. I mean, but he's yeah, cool. He asked right. some good questions. He asked some. He goes. So he goes. Four by four is dumb. I'm sorry. That's not my my thoughts on that. But. He goes, is there any pros that point and shoot as in not the whole whipping over jumps into corners and whatnots? Could you break down how to drive in the air so a simpleton like myself can understand? I think Coelho is a good example of a point and shoot pro. He was very point and shoot at. Yeah, Coelho, Coelho is pretty point and shoot. And the way he, like, not even jumping, like, he jumps pretty normally. But the way he approaches corners is, is amazing. He drives like a, you know full-scale car where you brake, turn, and then accelerate. He drives really, really nicely. Uh, I'm really a fan of his driving driving style. I can't do that, but he's really good at it. So, um, why, why, he said he, like, he full-wheel drive car stuff. No, no, he was talking about, oh, what, what? Uh, one guy asked about, the next guy asked about four-by-four four short course. He wants to go, he wants to know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, he's right, four-by-four. Four he says, could stuff. you break down how to drive in the air? So yeah, so there you go. Pretty much like there's a lot of ways to go. 
uh one way to go is just like throttle break mm -hmm. and then like turn separately but you can sort of do both so you can if you want the front end to dip down you can like jump to jump lift off and while you're lifting off turn the wheels so the front end will immediately the, like the front uh, uh drive shaft will immediately sort of break because there's more uh sort of friction so you don't have to actually brake to get the front end down so you can get front end down just slightly and by doing this the car won't really stall in the air mm -hmm. it'll be just a slight sort of correction mm -hmm. Uh, I do this uh, quite a lot. I don't brake in the air. Very rarely do I brake. I usually just steer it so that I get the front down a bit. And then like I steer opposite from the corner. So let's say I'm jumping a double and the next corner is to the right. I will turn the wheels to the left in the air. So the outside will be the sort of lifted up. And then I, when I correct, the car will be sort of already tilted towards the corner. Mm -hmm. It won't be... It, it's not like It's not like the car is like facing the corner. Mm -hmm. But the way the car flies in the air, the way it will sort of go to the outside tires and you will have grip going into the corners. You can take the corner much faster going mm -hmm. in. So it's not like you don't really want to whip the car because when you whip the car, you always lose speed. You scrub speed in the air. You scrub speed when you land. So you want to keep the movements very sort of minor. So always sort of try to get the nose down as early as you can like if it's sort of like a jump that jumps high, you kind of want to hang the car so that you make sure you will cover the edge of the landing, you know? You don't like nose down the landing. Mm -hmm. But if it's like a jump that goes really sort of low, you want the front down quite early. That This is a way to keep the air going over the car so the car flies like faster in the air. And then when you have the front end down, you can uh, accelerate down to the down ramp. And this way you get a lot of speed when you land the jump, especially if it's like a straight after the jump. You always want to land on throttle because it will just like speed up your car and the landing will give extra grip to the tires and you have a like maximum speed uh, landing-wise. Then uh, you don't really need to... You, you might need to steer if the jump phase is really steep just to get the front end down, even if it's a straight jump and it's straight afterwards. But you can use the brake as well. It's not that big of a deal, but I prefer steering because it won't scrub the speed as much. Um, you rarely really need to steer the car in the air. Only time if it's like a corner tabletop or something, you just jump it in an angle, steer to the opposite of the corner, and then correct it and you should land properly. You just need to get the amount right. You don't need to like go both ways or whatever. Uh, so it's it's very minor movements and practice sort of to make them consistently. That's the biggest deal, really. Well, you are a wheel flicking master. That's what you do: flickety, 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 flick, flicky, flick, flick, flick. Yeah, but I'm I'm the thing. It seems like I'm doing them for nothing, but I'm. It's all those are like I've been I've been focusing on those recently because I talked about this with one of my friends uh, a few weeks back. Like, because like he, he was of the opinion that you don't really need to flick the wheels at all, mm -hmm. but I kind of, I, I agree with him. Like a lot of people do it just for no reason. They just flick it just for fun. But the reason I do it is because I, when I see the car in the air and it's not the way I want it to be for the landing, I need to correct it. But when I see the car jump correctly, I don't need to do anything. I just, like, the car is correct in the air. So every time I flick, I see the car is not perfect for the landing, so I correct it. Cool. And that that's why I do it. And the thing is, like, you really rarely need brake in the air. Like, a lot of people brake in the air, and the car goes like this, and that's that's not good. You want to keep the car as forward as possible so, so that the front end is still a little bit down. And... Uh, Really, the best way to do it is just to lift off and not just brake. And that, yeah, that's how I do it. Is there any time, any jump particular where you want the rear of the car to land first? Sometimes. If you're running a lot of rear uh, droop, a lot of rear down travel, sometimes when the jumps land to flat and you have to be on power, it can benefit you landing in the rear. Because some cars are just like, if you have a very small amount of droop in the front, you land in the front, and the bumper just hits the ground, you can't get on the power as fast. So sometimes it's good to land on the rear wheels, on, on flat jumps. But mm -hmm. every time you have a landing, you want to run, uh, well, land run on front four, first yeah, and be on sense. power. Yeah. 
All right. I don't know, Hyper Man. You're going to have to try it, man. I, I tried a whip once after I saw JQ doing it. I broke the car right away. I was embarrassed. But I can do a whip accidentally yeah. anytime and pull it but, off. Yeah. But, like, the thing is, like, whipping is, like, you don't really never need to whip the car. Like, in motocross, it benefits you to whip the uh, bike because you scrub the air that way because you can have the bike sideways. But for RC, really... You want to keep the car as flat as possible in the air, as little movement as possible in the air, and then land on throttle. But scrubbing can help. You don't want the car the to be like, the jump, like this, though, right? Like you can scrub, you can use that. Scrub yeah, but scrub. I, I feel like most of the times braking is not good mm -hmm. because it stalls the car in the air. It's better to sort of just lift uh, instead of braking. It really depends. If it's like a sort of step up, then braking might be good. If it's sort of like a longer jump. You kind of want to lift and then go on power when you land. So that's how I feel about it, at least. Uh, some people like to brake, but the thing is, like, when you brake, it's really hard to make consistently. Some laps you miss it, some laps you, like, go too early and you don't make the jump. So it's more sort of secure, and I feel like you can make it more consistent just to lift. Okay. Sweet, man. All right, KB Wolf, what's up, dudes? He always asks the question, what type of food we prefer? Prefer. Hope all is good. Spaghetti lasagna, Max. Uh, lasagna, actually. I, I love uh, penne arrabbiata, but lasagna is really freaking good. I think so, it's lasagna for me, like, too. Yeah, like spaghetti, like if it was penne arrabbiata and lasagna, I'd be, I'd be having a hard time here. But when it's spaghetti and then lasagna, I'm like, yeah, I mean, lasagna, come on, dude. Especially like one of those Italian ones. Like, oh my God. That's good. He asks, does JQ book apply to eight scale? I'm sorry, 10 scale electric. I would say so. Yeah. yeah. The thing is, the thing here is that I find kind of ridiculous is people are like, uh, like even some people that comment on my videos are like, I'm getting like learn, learn to eight scale and I'm, it's helping watching your videos. Like I'm like, if it's an RC car, it works like an RC car, mm -hmm. you know? It's not like, obviously, like, you can say, let's say, for 10 scale, you don't focus on bumps as much. For 8 scale, you have to focus on ruts and bumps much more. And, like, yeah, obviously, that kind of stuff you're right about. You have to learn the 8 scale differently. But this, if you really look at the theory of setting up a car, the same things work on a touring car, the same things work on an electric car, 10 scale one, and the same things work in an A scale, but the chuggy. All the same things work if you know what's actually happening in the car. Because, like, in touring cars, the tires are really small. So you have to take that into account and then make the according changes to the setup. So think of, like, basically tuning a an, an touring car is the same as, like, tuning an A scale car for smaller tires or whatever. So, like, take all those things into account. And when you take that, everything works the same. And the thing is, like, when JQ wrote that book, I know for a fact that he, like, most of the stuff he learned for, for that book was from full-scale examples. So, like, full-scale racing cars, like, vehicle dynamics, all that kind of stuff. Like, he's read all those books, and all that stuff applies to RC. And there's, like, there's no question about it. Even, like, uh, you remember when I talk about the WRC engineer uh, from Toyota, who, who is uh, sort of owner of the test logger brand? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that guy, even him, like he was like when he was testing the test logger for the first few times. The things I do to my RC car, we do to the WRC car. Mm. Like if it's the same scenario, all the setup changes are pretty much the same. Like whatever they do with the shock packets, whatever they do with the diffs, whatever they do with the roll centers, everything works the same way because it's a car. Car works like a car. It's physics and it's just geometry mm -hmm. and. That's something that I really want people to people to understand that the basic principle is the same. The circumstances are the what's what's different. So you have to take those circumstances into account. And that's what really we're trying to do. We're trying to make a car that works the best in these circumstances. So let's say a dusty track or a slippery track, or and then in 10 scale on carpet or on dirt. It's not like it's kind of like saying like, oh, I know how to set up a 10 scale car for a carpet and not knowing how to set up a 10 scale car for on dirt. 
that just means that you have found a good setup for carpet and like you just do those things, but you don't really understand how that setup works in, in reality, in theory, and like what the physics behind it are. So like if you know how to set up a car, you know how to set up a car. Right. And I just want to confirm people, that's not WRC, the RC company, that's World Rallying Rally Championship. Uh yeah, right? yeah. yeah. Not World Racing Car or whatever they call it. Um, WRC. Yeah, basically. I don't know what. It's a it's a weird name, but yeah, yeah. WRC World. When you first said, I was like WRC. Yeah. Like, oh, real real rally. Um, sweet, yeah. sweet. Yeah, check it out. Get it, man. Get the book and uh and and learn, dude. You'll be all right. Uh, I think so. I think so. It applies. Teddy built racing. Will four by four short course become great again? I don't think so, dude. No. I I would like I mean, to see two wheel drive short it, course. But- yeah. I, I I would like to see all classes ex- except for nitro buggy, two wheel drive, and uh, electric happen. buggy. Maybe four wheel drive. All the other classes should be burned in hell. <laughs> no, it's not. I don't agree with you. <laughs> um, I just don't think. I, mean, I, I mean, don't think short that, course is going to be gonna big. Happen. Because look, it was only nine at the Enats, even though it was a small turnout. Dave's dropped nine. Th- yeah, and Fend and Cav were nine off. short course. Track? Four by oh, four no. short course. Four by four. It probably be yeah, only yeah, about yeah, ten. Yeah. It probably be only about twenty short course trucks at. Eh, it might be more stock truck. I no, think. I, I mean, think usually at the Nats it's like mo- at tops twenty. Yeah, and modified it might be oh. a main in, in two wheel drive. There's two wheel drive. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think, yeah, I'm talking about two wheel drive. Yeah. Well, he's talking about four four wheel drive. Dave dropped yeah, it. Yeah, but Dave stopped racing it. Like he had a class for short course at his races. He stopped because he just isn't getting there. It's it's just it's 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 dead, unfortunately. Um, but it it kind of went away from what I, short I'll course was supposed you. to be. Short course. I have is, to correct you. Oh, it's it's dead, fortunately. Shut up, Max. Let me finish my statement. <laughs> um, if you really look at it, short course kind of went completely away from what it was meant to be. It was a entry level, like it started with slash as an entry level. Uh, Entry level class for new people to get in, and I still think uh, two wheel drive stock slash is great for that. The races, the industry, raw, everybody screwed it by wanting to go fast like two wheel drive and four wheel drives. You know, hundred dollar mm-hmm. high flow bodies and tires and this, all this, all this stuff, all this stuff. People went crazy on it. Then you add in the the four by four short course. It's basically an eight scale car, eight scale e buggy. If that's a short course, yeah, yeah, and it's it's a bit ridiculous. Like I think you it's fun. The Durango- it's fun. The Durango short course was great because it was based on a 10 scale buggy. So it's pretty much a 10 scale buggy with a longer chassis and longer arms. Mm-hmm. Obviously the body and the wheels, but like sort of like what stadium trucks, like the four four wheel drive stadium trucks are now, except for like for a short course. Mm-hmm. So like, I mean, those those were really good. Like that th- that class was fun because you could run them on 10 scale tracks, no worries, mm-hmm. because it was just a tad bit heavier than a two wheel drive sort of short course truck and two drive short course trucks weren't that heavy. So like it, it, you, it was easy to run in like, uh, in like 10 scale tracks. You could run them in 10 scale tracks all the time. Then when Techno came out with their eight scale converted to a short course truck, then it just like those cars were like three, three, three kilograms, kilograms heavy. And it's like, you can't really run that on a mm-hmm. 10 scale track. Yeah, I, I'm sorry. I think it's I think it's just it's been dying for a long time. I would like to see two wheel drive short course come back, but on a more basic slash, which mm-hmm. it's, it's big, you know, it's still big, but nowhere near as a, as big as it used to be. So it's unfortunate, man. I, I just don't I don't see it. I don't see it. Um, it probably shouldn't even have been a class at the Enats, to be honest. But yeah, it is yeah, what I it is. It, but... Uh, checkered past. Looking at various eight scale companies out there for someone st- starting out, how would you rank the various manufacturers in order of in order of least complicated build and ease of driving to the most difficult build and finicky tuning? That's a lot of chassis to go through. I, I, um, okay, let's let's pick like chassis. So let's pick like the big brands: HB, AE, uh, Kyosho, Mugen, uh, TLR. C. Yeah. Yeah. Techno. What else? Yeah, Techno. techno. Um, uh, are you picking JQ as well? Yeah, because I mean, I, I'm, 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 I'm putting JQ down way down the list because that was one of the hardest kits I ever had to build the first time I built it. Yeah, but I mean, the thing is, like, the issue with JQ kits was, like, 
all the parts were sort of outdated mm-hmm. in a way. And they're like, that was mostly the issue. And, um, what, all right, what so who do you have first? I mean, I mean, let's, for, for ease of build, for ease of build, mm-hmm. that's what's going first, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, that's x rays as well. Uh, we take that yeah. into, uh, into this as well. So, okay. for ease of build, I mean, I gotta be honest, like, this obviously it's gonna be sounding like a sort of bias, but I I sincerely believe associated. Okay. Like for all the cars I've seen, Mugen might be easy as well because it's so very similar to associated in a lot of ways. But Kyosha is Kyosha is a fucking it's awful to wrench on. HP is the same. Um, I, I was shocked techno, when someone told me that they had to put like 14 shims in a rear diff of a HB car or something like that. Yeah, I mean, it's it's nuts. And they, the hinge pins are a disaster. So, and, and, and oh they don't God. have quick access. Listen. You know what made me laugh? So many people cried about not having quick access diffs on the JQ car, but I didn't know that HB didn't have them. Yeah. Either. Yeah, I, don't, I think Kyosho has them now, but they didn't have it before. Mm. Mugen might have them now, but I'm not 100% sure. But it's like. Yeah, I mean, All right. I don't know about TLR, but let's they're just really them. Let's mess. just rank them. Like, who you think? Okay, let's rank them. So, number one, AE. I actually number move. two. I have to put Techno there. Maybe man. Mugen. Number one. I'm putting Techno I up there, man. Their, they got some really good. I wrench right their e buggy. I wrench their e buggy, and it's it's a bit of a pain. Okay. It's it's not awful. I I'd say like it would be associated. I'd say Mugen second, mm-hmm. then maybe Techno, then probably Kyosho. Well, okay, X-Ray before Kyosho. X-Ray is before Kyosho. Then, then I put JQ in front of HB. Really? Wow, yeah. people aren't yeah, going to like I that. Would. Yeah, but I mean, I'm being honest here. The HB, like the way they did it is, oh my God. Like it's the car is really fast, really good on track, durable, all that kind of stuff. But like... A lot of very weird doing the. I mean, even they have all diff boxes, so they have the same excuses. Mm. Thank you, but but yeah. Um, then oh, you, we miss TLR. I don't. I. I'm still kind on defense of TLR because I think TLR. the regular driver like isn't going. T- like it depends. I think if you got a high grip track, smooth TLR yeah. is your, your car. You know what I mean? Yeah, but it the thing is like. like the TLR is like the front and rear end is sort of good now when they updated it, but the radio tray is still a bit of a mess in my eyes. So I'd put TLR in the sort of a mid pack X ray Kyosho. So then, uh, then what was the other one? The track speed or ease of tune? Hmm? Well, yeah, the ease next of one. Tuning. So it was like ease of tuning on the track. Uh, so I'd put. Probably Kyosho in the front, really. No, I don't know about the new ones, but the MP9, like, come on. Same setup, every track, different springs. Like, ridiculous. Uh, Mugen probably is in the top as well. Probably even second, I'd say. Mugen's um, a good car, man. I've, I've always loved my Mugen. Yeah, yeah, that's the thing. Like, uh, Then third, I'd say... Like, this is going to be controversial, but I'd say... I'd say the black edition really was really ease of tune. I run the same setup everywhere. Yeah. With AE now, I'm getting to sort of that point. So it could mm-hmm. just be I I've, I've sort of been finding my setup. But like with JQ, I was like always same setup. Like no matter what grip, whatever. Like it, it was pretty crazy. But it was still sort of like Kyosha and Mugen are because they are really good at every track. Like JQ is sort of struggling at some conditions. With the AE. Probably the next high grip tracks they like, struggle. High grip smooth the tracks. The JQ car struggles really a lot. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. A lot. And that's the like that's one of the strengths of the AE. So AE is sort of like has a wider spectrum, I'd say. So maybe AE is third, JQ fourth, but like th- those I feel are pretty much tied. Then like comes oh well, HP is there too. Sort of like after Mugen and Kyosho, then X Ray. I don't really know about X-Ray. Probably somewhere in there. Um, but like Techno, 
techno and uh, TLR are sort of cars that, yeah. I think techno. I think the new car from techno is really good. A lot, you know, a lot of people used to say. Yeah, that but they, like the thing is, like, it's I don't know. I I'm not convinced it really works anywhere other than tracks like DNC and and uh, Silver State. They they seem to be struggling a little bit on the. Uh, rough tracks i think there was tebow was talking to tebow i can't remember but i think yeah but the thing is like he the best result of the year was that silver state so it's like yeah kind it's of weird like i don't know himself. he was so yeah, fast so at i silver think state. yeah I, th- I think what he means is that he himself is driving wise struggling on uh, rougher tracks but like to me no doubt the techno car is, is the best when it's and, and when it's, it's what, happy sorry? Grip and where it's smooth they when it's like rough and the track is slow speed, then mm-hmm. techno is really good. Okay. When it's higher speed, higher grip. Okay, that's why I must have got it confused with. Because, uh, yeah. Uh, it's been so long. Man. I've been, had so much stuff through my head. But I definitely yeah. ranked the new buggy. I mean, I'm heard a lot of good things about the new buggy. Uh, you know how before they used to say the nitro car, like people say, oh, the truck is good and the e-buggy is good, but the nitro car is too much, too, too much of a handful. So I don't hear yeah. that anymore. And Again. Yeah, but the thing the thing here is though, like when we're going through these brands, like all brands have their sort of like the special speciality, but then it's like in the end they are really close together. You know, like HB is really good on like American style tracks, like DNC. Uh, then like Associate is really good on like European tracks, like uh, pretty much like everywhere where it's like in Italy or Spain, like tracks like that. Associate is really good. And then, like, the Mugen... Oh, we completely missed S-Works, by the way. Oh, man, we, I, we no go, this is, I think we could have a whole podcast just on this. Yeah. The S, it's but so like, many different... It's it's so many yeah. brands out there. It's impossible to rank them all, I think. We yeah. should have ranked the But teams. the thing is, like... Yeah. The thing is, like, I feel X-Ray could be a good car, but the issue is they don't really have drivers. I don't feel they have enough drivers to have sort of a good set up for every condition like mm-hmm. testman is probably one of their only guys at the moment it's like that's the biggest issue for x-ray i feel like um the, the thing about kirsch and mugen though are like they are so such old brands so they they have sort of sort of aspect of it so they are pretty high up on every aspect mm-hmm. for example like ae has strengths like the car is really fast it works very uh, well on high speed uh some american star track it's it's crazy fast but the thing is, like, Mugen and Kyosho have that sort of all-round thing to them. They're, they're not the fastest car at every track or even at even 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 the most tracks. There are most tracks they aren't the fastest car. Mm-hmm. But they're good at but everything they're really they do. Good. They're, they're good at everything they do. And that's because of, like, the, the timeline. Mm-hmm. Those cars are over 10 years old. Mm-hmm. Only slight that's changes That's how I explain my, my Mugen MBX7R, man. I said it's probably not the best car out there on any con- any, any, on any particular thing. But it's good at everything. And I'll be honest with you, man. Most of these cars out there, like somebody with my lack of skills, I'm not going to notice. Like, I mean, yes, I have enough skills to notice a difference in a car, stuff like that. But I think all these cars are good, man. I just think it's about. Yeah. And the thing is like. To rank them all. I haven't even built all of them. Yeah. And the thing is like. To say like to someone like, hey, what's the best car to buy? It's like, okay, well, if you're looking just for results, most likely if you pick AE, HB, Mugen, Kyosho, or I'd include X-Ray in there as well. Why not JQ or Mayako from now on? Uh, If you pick any of those cars, most likely your results will be pretty much the same. It's like none of those cars are so much better that they would stick out. Mm Mm-hmm. But the thing is, like, at some tracks, there are differences and some aspects of it. So, like, wrenchability, durability of parts, or the speed of the car, or if you sort of enjoy a car that has a lot of steering I'm gonna or whatever, tell you right then off you the can, bat, like, pick it. I'm going to tell you right off the bat, and I've seen it a million times over. The JQ car, the first build for anybody that I've noticed, has been hard. I remember when I first built it, I was like, what the fuck? Like and yeah. then, but then, then later gotta, on, you kind of have to know. But later on, then you, you go and you see, what you're doing. Oh, okay, this is what he done. Why he done this and all that type of stuff. Yeah. Man, I'm seeing guys with I'm got 25 years of experience. Can't even build yeah. the car, and I'm just like, 
it's so simple once you know, like you know what I mean. But it's it's just yeah. like, it's just details and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. It's a hard that, question. That's something that we should do a team yeah. ranking video. I've been saying this for a while. We've we're in the middle yeah. of the year now. We should rank these teams and see how they're doing. Like we should make a ranking yeah. system and do it. That's yeah. a good the question. Thing is, like when I when I'm doing this, like I have to kind of like <laughs> because I can't be like sort of biased in this, so I have to kind of like watch myself. Uh, but yeah, I mean, yeah, I I mean the thing is that. Like people always ask, like especially since I left JQ, mm -hmm. they ask like, should I switch to AE? And I'm like, yeah. I mean, I've enjoyed the cars. I like AE, mm -hmm. but like, if you're looking just to get results, it doesn't really matter what car you choose if you just like what you're doing. You know, you should if you, stick to uh, something you, and learn it, and then go exactly, from there. Yeah. Like, yeah. Look, like honestly, when Cole's like Cole's a great example. He switched HB. He wasn't good the first year. You know what I yeah. mean? And then it like the second year he started picking up speed. Okay, he's he hasn't had the results that he, yeah. he should probably should be getting now, but that's more to do with uh yeah. with Cole. But it took him a while. Like people like people like these pro guys that do this for a living, it takes them time to get up to speed with the car. Okay, Mayfield kind of was on speed with the Mugens right away. But that's Mayfield. Yeah, but the thing was like even Mayfield, like like at some big races, he struggled with the Mugen in the start. But now when he's got his setup, he's got his engine, everything set up, he's like, he's, he's over there, mm -hmm. you know? So like, even he needed time to be consistent over time. Like everyone can win a race with a new car. That's not hard. Here's thing the thing to about do. new cars. But to win races consistently. Here's what happens with new cars. You get a new car, you buy a new car. It's all nice and new, right? All fits all mm -hmm. nice. You drive the shit out of it. You don't rebuild it as much, good as you can. Because let's be honest, like maintaining an eight scale car, is a lot of it takes a lot of money, takes a lot like not a lot of money, but a lot of maintenance. You drive that yeah. car for six months, you're trying to make it stretch a year. Like a car gets to a point where it's no good. Like it's just worn out, and that's it. You either replace everything on there or you buy a new kit. So then you're like, oh, this car I, this car is shitty. Oh, it doesn't work. Oh, it's it's the car, it's yeah. the car. All the while you're just realizing you're just putting like band-aids on top of a, a amputated leg. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. And yeah. then you're like, oh, I'm going to, it's the car. I'm going to switch brands. You got a new brand six months later and like, oh, it's so great. And you just do the six month thing all over again. Like, you know what I mean? Or a year yeah. or whatever. So I don't yeah. know, man. You know I mean, what? Here's my advice to you. I know he wants me to rank the brands, but it's kind of hard. So let's just do one quick ranking. Yeah. So let's do your top five brands. And then we'll Top five brands. So brands that I would like to run. No, brands that you think for you. So you had Mugen and AE as your top two. Kyosho, uh, X-ray. Who else did you have in there? Um, for for the build a uh, wrenchability mm -hmm. or whatever. Yeah. Uh, yeah. AE Mugen. Uh, what did I have then? Oh, we had. I think we had techno. I had. Yeah, techno. Yeah, AE Mugen. AE Mugen. I guess techno for like wrenchability. They have like quick, uh, quick access diff boxes and mm -hmm. that. So that's pretty much that. I'd say that's like the, all, all the other cars have some like lack in that department. I feel like those are like that's a hard question cars to answer. That's a good question. Though. We might have to have a podcast just on that. We're gonna yeah. do that. We're gonna do that. Yeah, but the thing is, like, there's so many aspects. If you yeah. ask, like, what's the easiest car to wrench on? Yeah, this is the, that car. And then, like, what's the cheapest? Like, what has the cheapest parts? What has the most option parts out of the box? Mm -hmm. so, like, there's so what people like, like. If someone can spend a lot of money, they can buy a certain car and then buy all the option parts to it. And like, and if you just want a car that's fast, like then that's a different thing. So there's so many aspects of picking a car. I agree. But it's a great question. And, and some people even like, and some people even like just prefer to have a good team. Like exactly. Some people don't really need the best car. They just want to have a good team around them so they can figure out the setup and all that kind of stuff. So. Yeah. These are great questions, but that last one we could have been on for a long time about that. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> but that was a good question. We might have to just do a whole podcast about that. Uh, thank you, everybody, for the questions. Thank you, Max, for answering them. I, we don't have any more. We didn't get that many. I see somebody sent me one privately, and I always hate when they do that because I lose it. We should, you know what, you know what, Keenan, we should probably do sort of just just Q and A uh, like podcast on Patreon. Yeah, maybe we like should just Q and A. Yeah, maybe we'll yeah. do that. This is always like I, I really enjoy this because I can be like right. there's a lot of like a lot of the stuff we don't normally talk about. Mm -hmm. Like people ask something off off topic and and it's pretty fun actually. Yeah, I enjoy I enjoy, I enjoy our lives we do as well. I do. 
I do. All right. I like interacting with the people and stuff like that. So Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'm sorry if I forgot your questions. I know I had one. Uh, it's like someone asked me a question, then I talk to him, and then I forget all about it. Like, you know what I mean? And then it's like yeah. up in the conversation. You know, somebody just can't ask me a question. You ask me a question, it's going to be a 30-minute to an hour-long conversation. Like, you know? <laughs> yeah. So yeah. <laughs> that's how it goes. All right. Well, thank you to BTRC for your support. Um, they're off to Wicked Weekend or soon. Check them out, please, if you guys can. Use the affiliate link in our link and help us out, too. So show the, show the sponsors some love. Show us the podcast some love. You know what, Max? Now I'm getting on to the main interview with uh, Mike. But we're going to bring you back. We're gonna. I got a good thought. Of, I got a good Sun City RC Raceway Dawn and Quiet topic this week that we're going to talk about. And it was a question from one of the... It was one, a question from one of these that I thought would make a great topic. So... Thank you, everybody, for your questions. Enjoy the interview with Mike Mabry of High Tech RC. And Max, I will see you after this for our last subject and our conclusion of the podcast. All right? That's right. Techno RC. Techno RC. Techno RC is a premium manufacturer specializing in 8th and 10th scale high performance off road RC buggies and trucks. Visit www.technorc.com for a complete catalog of their products. Techno RC, excellence in engineering. Hashtag Techno Takeover. Joining me this week is uh, a company that, a man from a company that recently, I wouldn't say recently, but in the last few months came on as a sponsor of the podcast, which I'm grateful of, but they, they aren't new to the RC industry. I used to run their servers back in the day. That's all I used to run. I still probably have some high, older high tech servers here from back in the day, but I'd like to introduce the, uh, Mr. Mike Mabry. Actually, Mike, I'm not even sure of your actual title at high tech. So why don't you let us know? Hey, great to get to be here. Thanks for having me on. Um, well, I've been, I'm, I'm actually the sales manager also in charge of, uh, the team, the uh, aircraft team and the surface team. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've been with the company for 26 years now. So, uh, I, I've had a lot of hats, uh, done, done a lot of, a lot of traveling over the years, talked to a lot of people and, and, uh, I've been lucky enough to, to make this uh, a career. Yeah, 26 years is a long time. When you told me that, I was like, wow, I didn't realize you had been in the industry that long. Um, I like to get to know my guests. I haven't really spoken to you that much, but I always like to find out how did guys or how did the guests get into RC? Like what was their first exposure to not just like a racing RC or a, a proper hobby grade RC car or car or vehicle? Sure. Yeah. So, um, it, it all with a lot, a lot of people, it was, you know, my dad, uh, my dad was, uh, kind of one of the actually kind of pioneers in the, in the airplane, you know, side of things back in the, you know, the late sixties and stuff. And I used to go, uh, to the field with him and, you know, uh, I just, one of the, my, my earliest memories is, you know, smelling the nitro fuel and stuff, you know? So, um, but you know, I, I did, uh, uh, did the planes, uh, mm-hmm. early on and then uh, got into uh 12 scale racing was mm. was where i was introduced to to the to the hobby and to the to the rc uh, car side and loved it loved loved it um did you know i i went through all the all the categories pretty much and mm. you know 12 scale on road was was kind of all that was out there originally you know there's eight scale but that was you know a little more elite classes and stuff uh so 12 scale was the big the big pull for me used to go up to the ranch pit shop and and briggs cunningham and up in the you know la area and and uh you know got to meet a lot of cool people up there and and you know had you know raced for for some sponsors you know over the years and and uh then did uh did the off-road stuff uh, the 10 scale was at the the 85 worlds in del mar uh you know i never uh did got big into the eight scale mm-hmm. uh, like like it's going now um but you know the sh- i got a short course i got some buggies you know I've always kind of liked electric uh have raced some eight scale on road uh it's really 
Formula One of, of RC, you know, it's, uh, uh, that's always kind of my favorite thing. I always kind of gravitate to on-road because it's easier to pick back up. Uh, you know, you throw an on-road car that's handling out on the track and you get your timing down and, you know, you, uh, it takes a little while to, to figure that, uh, the, the third dimension, uh, with, uh, you know, off-road where you got to jump and, you know, with the, the dirt and not so much traction and stuff like that. But, uh, but I enjoyed all aspects of it. Um, I did work for a company called uh, Hobby Shack uh, for a number of years. It turned into Hobby People. Well, so actually Hobby People originally. And uh, so I was, uh, you know, managed a retail hobby shop in the past. So got a lot of experience with, you know, with customer service mm-hmm. and, and utilizing the product, you know, knowing what to do, you know, knowing, knowing, uh, you know, all the ins and outs of, of the hobby. And, uh, that's why I was, uh, uh, you know, got into this position and, you know, originally just as customer service and, and then just kind of grew from there. And so just, just loving it, loving the industry. You've, you've, so you've worked in the RC industry your entire working career pretty much. Pretty pretty much, pretty much. Uh, Yeah. Um, spent a little bit of time, mostly, mostly in retail before, Mm -hmm. um, but uh, always doing stuff that I, that I enjoyed, you know, that's always good uh, when you, you know, you got a job that you enjoy, then it's, it's, uh, it's fun to come to work. Sweet. So, so you are from like, all right, so you're from so well, the SoCal, San Diego, that area. Yeah. So you grew up in like what I consider the Mecca of RC. So you got to rub shoulders with guys like Gil Losey and, and um like, wow, well, in the eighties, like 85, you know, that's when like offer had kind of just really, kicked off i want to say not kicked off yeah. but you know was getting big you had jay jay housley jam and jay yeah yep. um jam and jay is cool too i, I met him many yeah. years ago i used to run his car cool dude i had him on this podcast too great dude he remembered me and everything i was like wow dude. Oh, good. um so yeah, you got to see junior yeah Ossie, gary kai's you know i mean a lot a lot of people that you know i i've, I've been around i haven't been doing a whole lot lately mm-hmm. um but you know, it's still something that that's in my in my DNA. Yeah, I, I actually had um, uh, I'm pretty good friends with Alexander Hagberg. He's like a twelve scale guy for X Ray. He's really good too. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, well, obviously. I've watched, you know. I've watched it. I, I haven't. I don't think I. I think I saw him once when I went to the uh, uh was the the race uh, that Scotty puts on in uh, Vegas. Yeah. And just watching some of these guys, they're just they're just machines. You know, oh, they just hit the same line every time. He's good. He's, he's we call him the doctor, and so he kind of got me on that looking at twelve scale stuff. And uh, another friend of mine, Donathan Zach Donathan. He does it. Uh, it's not as big as it used to be back in the day, but no, it's still a, it's no. like a niche within a niche. But I actually have a lot more respect. I've watched those things go, and they're so fast. I would never be able to go on a track like that, not at those speeds. It, it, yeah, it, it's crazy. The the especially the, the with the carpet, you know, now mm-hmm. and uh, the just how fast everything is. I mean, you know, it's just unbelievable. You know, the the touring cars is what what I really kind of gravitated to mm-hmm. after they became big, and and you know that was that was uh, those are fun to drive. Mm-hmm. You know, your four wheel drive, and then they're pretty hooked up and and stuff. But still, you know, I you know I, I like to think I I'm 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 pretty fast, and then I get out at some big race and then i'm just you know it's so it's such a struggle sometimes you know to just figure everything out so you was into touring car in its heyday like the barry baker days when they were still racing cars on parking lots and stuff like that oh sure yeah in fact we used to have a parking lot race um we had uh i think like seven of them mm. uh that we would put on at the high-tech parking lot and we had actually that was when hobby people had a had a like a an on-road series that they put on at their at their stores Mm -hmm. and so we had them come down and run the event and uh yeah i remember barry coming down and and uh hara i mean uh cliff let i mean Mm. you know there was a lot a lot of a lot of big names came and and uh, and raced and and it was a fun thing. So we we put up a big tent. Uh, we had everybody you know area to pit, and uh, you know just ran a ran a fun program. 
Sweet, awesome. Was you still involved in the aviation side at all while you was doing this, or just strictly? I, I do everything. So okay. you know, I um, most of the events that I was going to would have been uh, the airplane events. The you know, there's there was a lot of trade shows. You know, mm. years ago, uh, they've they've gone away though, unfortunately. Mm. You know, there really there was a couple car shows uh, or shows that had car stuff in them. Um, you know, they did the RCX show mm-hmm. up in uh, Pomona and around that area, uh, and they would draw some of the some of the car the car manufacturers. But most of the the events that that we would do as far as the trade shows go, it was all based around the the aircraft side of things, aircraft, heli, stuff like that. Oh, it's, um, it's so much big RC. Yeah, in some senses, um, it's waned definitely in the last several years because of all the regulations. So, you know, they, unfortunately what they did was the, the, the FAA decided that model airplanes are drones. Mm. And so they lumped us all into this category of, of being a drone so that they could regulate it. Gotcha. And so now there's talk that, uh, and I think that it may be even that it will be uh, that you actually have to have a device on your model that is trackable and, mm. or you have to fly at a, at a sanctioned field. So, so that makes it to where it's, you know, if you have to put a device on every model airplane you have, that that's a GPS or a tracking device, it's going to be, expensive yeah and um, you know so so those are things that have definitely hurt the the, the hobby and you know as far as the aviation goes but uh yeah but nowadays people like people can get into flying so easy now like you can get a plane for like 100 bucks go out there crash it and got another one I, I'm, yeah one of the one of the companies i have to kind of give a shout out to if nobody's ever ever seen what they do is is a company called flight test mm-hmm. and they actually created their own their own customer they created these models that were made out of foam board and they came up with all these different types of models just by cutting out foam and gluing it together with hot glue and then using uh, inexpensive motors and and uh you know ideally our servos uh, um and and but they they just appealed to just this generation that wasn't you know fixed on you know the mainstream of of you know i have to go to a field and i have to uh you know learn to fly and stuff they they learned to fly by crashing mm. you know the planes are really durable they they crash them they fix them and stuff like that they just had an event i believe are going to have an event or the flight fest and i've been to a couple of them and they they will actually have combat they they just everybody goes out and throws their airplane in the, in the sky and they just all chase each other and try to crash into each other oh i could do and, that uh, yeah <laughs> yeah so uh so it's, it's definitely a different thing so so for people that are maybe like thinking about hey i'd like to get into a hobby uh i you know i want to give a you know shout out to to those guys over there that that have these this really cool thing where you can kind of build your own uh and they brought back building too you know most people want everything ready to go um it's like cars nowadays too everything's like mostly ready to go and of course if you're a racer you don't want that you yep. you want to build it yourself or or you got to pull it apart and rebuild it you know but yeah sweet but, uh, so so i guess we, when did you start with high tech then officially uh so it's like 1996 okay yeah so i just got out of high school um yeah. uh, <laughs> i was like 17 because you got yeah, I was my first, yeah yeah i'm getting up there so um I'm, uh how did that happen uh, well, it was actually, it was one of those things where it was just kind of like a friend, you know, said, Hey, these guys are looking for somebody. You should go talk to them. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I'm like, Hey, you know, uh, I used to work at, uh, you know, the, the hobby shop and, and been in all my life. And, and they're like, here you go. Sit down. You're, you're our promotions director now. And so got to, you know, go out and I'm like, well, I'm going to need some stuff. I'm going to need to, you know, have some cars. All right, here we go. You know? And so kind of got me all back into it, you know? So, uh, what was was your job as a, what was it? Uh, um, Promotions? promotions director. So like I was just in charge of giving stuff away. Oh, yeah. Honestly, it was so much, so my job, you know, people ask for stuff, you know, Hey, we got an event, we got a race, we got whatever. Um, you know, I get all these, it used to be get all these letters. You don't get letters anymore. Uh, and then you go through them all and, and figure out who was, who was worthy or give somebody something here and there. What it really came down to was squeaky wheel, you know, right. and, and this just a you know, little heads up for anybody out there that's 
promoting an event is, you know, you can send out your, your email, you can send out your letter, you can send out whatever you want, but if you don't, it's like getting a job. If you don't follow it up, if you don't call, if you don't say, Hey, what's up, you know, Hey, we're having this event, you know, and, and give some notice, mm -hmm. you know, don't just be like, Hey, next weekend we're having an event. Can you donate? You know? Um, but if you, if you reach out to a company, couple months, you know, I'd say a couple months is a good, good time to start. Say, Hey, we're having an event in a couple months. Here's the flyer if you got it. And, uh, you know, if you guys can help out, that'd be great. And then, you know, maybe like three weeks before the event, Reach you know, out. check back, you know, say, Hey, you know, this event's going on. Just hoping you guys can, you know, do something. And, and, you know, so getting the exposure, getting the product out there, you know, it's, it's nice. You just want to also kind of support, you know, the industry, and, uh, you know, there's, you know, some guys, I mean, obviously, you know, raffles and stuff, I, I always feel like, you know, you want, you want the right people to be in the raffle. You don't, you don't want some pro guy getting something and he's just going to be like, well, I get all this stuff for free. So I'm going to, you know, sell it or mm -hmm. something like that. But, um, you know, same thing with the airplanes, you know, you, you don't want, you want people that are going to use it. You don't want necessarily like some rank beginner that gets some, something expensive and they're like, I don't even know what to do with this, you know, mm -hmm. but, but, uh, so that was part of, part of my job. And, uh, and then just, you know, going to the shows, going to the trade shows, going to events, um, you know, deciding what, you know, what events to go to. I used to travel a lot, go to nationals. Uh, I was even the roar, uh, secretary for, uh, several years back, I don't know, 10 years ago or so. Um, oh, wow. it was actually when, when, after Mike Reedy had, had, uh, had passed it, that, that was an opening and, and, and I went ahead and, and took that. So I was involved in, in some of the roar. How'd that work out you for know, you? Stuff. What's that? How'd that work out? Uh, you know, it, it's all a lot of political stuff, you know, so you have to deal with that. Oh, I know. Um, but I did, I was, uh, I did go to, uh, like stock nationals in, mm -hmm. in Utah as the roar official and, uh, had to make a couple, couple decisions that, you know, it just is what it is. You know, this is my decision. I have nothing, I have nothing against decisions that follow the rules. If you ain't following yeah. the rules, then you got to go. Yeah. Uh, I was just yeah. recently at the last, uh, the nationals here in, in, um, in Pennsylvania. Now, well, I, I was going to have electric, one before then. It was then. electric, right? No, it was uh nitro. Uh, the electric oh, one was okay. in, um, in Florida last weekend. Okay. So I went to the fuel nets and it was a big kerfuffle and, I got it all on tape, but it was, and I actually had the raw president on her because they had to come on and stuff. Raw is in, a, in bad shape right now. We're trying oh, to fix really? it. We're trying to fix it. It's just yeah. not got a good, uh, you need to get some new people in there, some fresh blood and, and get some, some forward thinking in there. I think like bring us, bring raw into the 20th century. No. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's always the case with mm -hmm. sanctioning bodies, you know, as you feel like, you know, maybe there's some loopholes that people are, are, you know, exploiting and, and, uh, but you know, I mean, there's, there's a lot of, a lot of, a lot to, you know, there was other, there was other, there was a Norca, Norca, I think it was, you know, that was around for a while and that they had a little bit different rules and stuff. And, and, uh, I know, you know, one of the things was Norca used to have like a, like, you know, different, uh, you know, sportsman and expert and, you know, pro and, and that, and that's something I do actually like at these, like the big A scale, you know, events is that you do have these different categories. Um, and I think Roar just puts everybody into one, one category. Yeah, but I'm actually a big pro I'm actually, I, I don't have nothing wrong with classes, but I also think that we should race how the rest of the people race in the world. And that's the one race that we do that, that like that we do in America. That right. we do do it, and I I like that. I'm not saying all races just, have yeah, to be like that. Against, yeah, against everybody, mm -hmm. you know. That's where you and, see where uh, you stand. I think in racing and where you really yeah. stand. Yeah, but yeah, and it, but there's sometimes where that's a discouraging. Yes, you know, you're kind of like oh, I'm in the F main. You're like, yeah, it's good. You know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, it's it's classes. We have we have this debate a lot. Uh, they have their good. They have their good qualities and they have their bad qualities. And I just think it's something that's her, and we, it's just we gotta make the best of it while it's her. Like I think it's great. I think we. I think people should start in sportsman and then graduate to open. And if they can, go to the pro class. I mean, if you can. Start, right. Right. You know, but uh, yeah, but you get the sandbaggers. Oh and yeah, stuff too. yeah. They don't want to. You know, it's it, always, this is racing, man. Picture. We're always gonna have people like yeah. if you like what the, if you ain't cheating, you ain't trying hard enough or something. You know, that's what they say. <laughs> So, um, what, what, what products was high tech offering back in 1996? That was probably just a little bit before I got 
I think I had just gotten really into RC, like 95. Well, 96. you know, when I came on board, we didn't have any high-end servos. Mm-hmm. We didn't, you know, it was it was more uh, geared towards the aircraft market. Mm-hmm. There were smaller servos, you know, the, and then, you know, we came out with even smaller servos, which because the, the Park Flyer stuff got real popular. Um, I was, uh, you know, a driving factor in some of, in the R&D, you know, for the company. So I got to go to Korea and talk with the engineers and say, we need this, we need this you know, here's a product that, you know, we need to compete against. Um, and, you know, so I think like, you know, originally I think like the 645 was like our best servo at the time, you know, and so we came out with a cordless motor servo, the, the 925, 945, and then, uh, you know, digital servos. And, and then as we developed, you know, the, the products into, you know, what, what they are today, you know, we were, we're leading edge as far as, you know, the, the technology and the development and, and some of the stuff where, you know, we were talking earlier about, you know, like our brushless servos, uh, the Brussels servos have a very unique uh, circuit and that the guy that designed the circuit uh, for us actually helped design uh, the circuit for Tesla. Mm-hmm. And uh, his name's Alan Cacconi. And so he, um, the way our circuit is, is, is that when the servo slows down uh, to come to a stop, just like a Tesla does, it regenerates the battery. So it puts power back into, into the, the battery. Um, but that's really not, not the, the most efficient part. It's that, that overall that the servo as it, as it's, um, used or stalled, it doesn't draw like a ton of current. If you, you know, were to stall a, a standard, most, most servos out there and, and, um, especially like a cordless motor servo, uh, and some of the other manufacturers, brushless servos, as you stall them, they draw a lot of current. They're going to, mm. you know, draw more and more current as, as, as they become stalled, uh, where the way the circuit works in our servo is that it only draws enough power to keep it in the position that it, that it, that it needs to be in. Um, the servo actually does not slow down under load. Okay. So as the servo is moving, it's moving full speed or it's, it's, it's can't move at all. Um, so when you stall it, if you were to like, just hang a weight off of it, uh, like our most powerful servo, like the, the 9381, uh, that servo draws about one amp. So what we're seeing is about two to three times the runtime on the receiver battery. Um, but also, you know, just as with that efficiency, uh, the motor's not getting as hot, uh, the amps aren't getting as hot. Uh, the servo is actually, uh, as far as the motor goes, the servo's underrated, uh, because we make it more efficient. So we mm. could put more torque, uh, in the servo, but when you have a servo that doesn't slow down under load, then there's no reason to have more torque as long as the servo's moving. Okay. So what we what we uh, chose was the efficiency of it, so that everything lives longer. It lasts, you know, it's more durable. Um, so the the performance is there over a period of time. So, and and that's that's a big factor, especially in you know in eight scale racing. And mm-hmm. like you said, you were familiar with our product because there was a time um, yep. where you know the, the high tech servos were you know this servo if you want your servo to live you need to put this servo in uh, you know there was uh, yeah, I think some, it was like the T the I, I just remember the end of it for TG I think and yeah yeah like the 7955 TG yeah like they lasted TG, forever yeah. man titanium gear yeah yeah, yeah. this is like like I, I just want to reiterate because when I got into racing or oh, when I got into eight scale back in like 95 and all that stuff, we, it was like, you, I didn't even think we had specialized servers for our cars, but I think we just had to use regular servers. You would probably get a Fataba servo that might have a few, a bit more power. You know, you get some, but the reliability of servers back in the day, like when I started was, was abysmal, like especially for off oh, yeah. for off road. Um, and then, like, I remember, like, guys, like, you got to try these high-tech servers. It's like 1999, 2000, I want to say. And I got them, and I never, I, I, I even think I bought some Don Herman. I moved her to the DR, like, in a car. Mm-hmm. And then I kind of, well, it kind of, you know, obviously by that time, we're talking, like, 14, 15 years later, there was a thousand different server companies at one point. You know, there's still a lot now. Yeah, yeah. And so, I under, like, I didn't hear about high-tech too much after that. But uh, some of the, I mean, back in the, like back in that time, the early two thousands, if you didn't run high tech, in my opinion, like you was, 
you just was running like you was you had a you probably would have a servo failure, you know? Well, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of brands of servo out there, and, and you know, everything's really good. Mm-hmm. Um, you, you're not going to get it right. There's no no real junk out there anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, and one of the things that sets us apart is is our customer service, is the warranty. Uh, we have a two year warranty on on all the servos, but if anybody's ever experienced you know high tech service you know, that a lot of times that that's just kind of a a rough guideline for us. Um, You know, we get something in, we can fix it easily or, or, you know, we're just going to take care of the customer. So there's points obviously where we have to say, Hey, you know, I'm sorry, you know, it's, it's, it's not economical to repair Mm -hmm. or, you know, it's this old, you know, whatever. And, and, you know, here's the price, but um, you know, we do what we can to make sure that our customers are happy, you know, that the product's good too. And that, that you're not, having to send it in. Um, one of the things that we were talking about as far as the development goes and stuff and what goes into like our products with the, uh, you know, the titanium gears, we were kind of the first with the titanium gears. We were also first with what we call a, an MP gear, which is the very, very bottom gear that touches the pinion on the motor in the servo. Um, those were all plastic. Everything was plastic at that point because there needs to be a buffer between the motor and the, the gears with the metal to metal contact. Um, if you've ever experienced some of those things where, I mean, I remember, you know, pipes on, on engines, you know, where there's a little rattle and it's creating, you know, RF noise and Mm -hmm. stuff. So, so we had to come up with, uh, what we did was we, we molded the the plastic around a, a inner pinion that was, that was steel. And, uh, in fact, I have, I have a one here that's, that's a kind of the, the newest version of that. And if you can see it's, it's got, it's sandwiched aluminum around the very edge of it. Mm. So the center is steel. The inner portion is a carbon uh, filled nylon. And then it's sandwiched around the very edge of it with aluminum. So that strengthens that plastic part. And then the inner portion is what connects to the rest of the gear train. So those are developments that we've, that we've had over the years that, that, you know, make our, make our products that much, that much better and more durable. I wouldn't even have thought of RF noise from a a pipe creating problems. Yeah. Yeah. Like the little metal piece, little flanges on there. You kind of typically want to put like a little shrink wrap around it. So that metal to metal is, is never good with the vibration. Mm -hmm. But I didn't even think how that would affect servers and radio yeah. oh yeah. yeah it's better now because of the 2.4 gigahertz mm-hmm. we don't see the same the same frequencies you know as far as the interference goes um you know we used to have problems with gasoline engines and the ignitions and you know stuff like that uh that created that created rf and so so those are little things that that uh but yeah if you have all metal gears in a servo then you can uh, get some jittering over uh, over time especially as the grease wears away Mm -hmm. now would you say my buddy always says this that the the aviation side of radios and stuff was far more advanced than the surface side is that true there's a lot of the stuff that you guys learn in aviation uh, filter over well, to the there's surface different, side. different things. Um, you know, high tech actually was building radios for a long time. Um, we decided that that it wasn't necessarily worth all the investment. Um, and you know, when you you look to streamline a company, we've got into other areas like uh, you know drones, uh, industrial uh, stuff like that. So so um, you know, unfortunately, we're not doing the the radio stuff right, anymore. Right, because you guys had the links. I think it was called. Yeah, we had the links and and yeah. Yeah, you know, originally had uh, had a Lynx uh, system, Lynx 3D, and then uh, came out with the Gresser line, and and uh, then the the Lynx 4S, which was a which was a great radio. Um, but it's 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 tough. It's a tough market. There's a lot of factors involved with with how that all works, and you know how much money you spend to to uh, you know build it, promote it, you know stuff like that. But uh, what's interesting is that there's there is a lot of features on the on the car on the surface radio. Uh, and when you talk to, you know, most of the pro guys, they're just like, well, you know, I'll use endpoints, you know, I don't use any other, any other, you know, features like that. Maybe they'll dial in a little dual rate or something like that to, you know, if the car is or expo, but you know, most of the, most of that stuff is always kind of geared towards, you know, people that, that it's just, it's a selling feature. 
Um, with the airplanes, you do have a lot of things that you need. Mm -hmm. You do have a lot of mixing capabilities and stuff like that and flight conditions. Uh, so, so they're, they're in more channels too. Right. So, so that is, that is more sophisticated. Believe it or not, these no prep drag guys mm -hmm. are really programming, getting into programming their radios now. Okay, to, just uh, as, like yeah. on on like an expo side of things, a, a or... whole bunch of things because they're trying because you know that this this no the no prep drag racing is really booming right now on surface. Yeah, yep. and so they want they, the the, the I, I don't know exactly how they're doing it. My buddy was explaining it to me, and it just went like that. I have to be there and see it. So he was explaining like with they with curves and different way that different. So they they use it with the ESC so. It hits at different times within a, a six, like a certain amount of time, so they can just launch better. You know what I mean? Right, right. And yeah, it's different stages that they have, but I, I, it's they're using the radio as well as ESC uh, programming, but it's a lot of right throttle doing, curves and stuff like that, uh, so that so that it doesn't come on too quick and mm -hmm. you get the traction. Yeah, we actually have released a, a servo um, that has a magnetic encoder uh in a kind of a, a really a standard servo uh it's called the the md485 mm -hmm. that we geared towards kind of that that uh that next step as a entry level uh drag you know no prep drag servo where you're looking to replace your standard servo it, it's only about uh about 37 dollars mm -hmm. and it has that like i said it has the magnetic encoder instead of a potentiometer so that came from our industrial side because on the industrial side uh that the precision and the durability is um is is really really important so the magnetic encoder is something that we use in, on that side so we took a our standard 485 servo which is you know, about 100 inch ounces of torque which is plenty for for you know a drag car uh uses a we call the carbonite gears which is a glass filled nylon and so they're really tight gear train a uh, very precise centering and that's what you want for you know for drag racing mm -hmm. you know you you got to go straight that's that's the key that's the factor so so that servo was brought out um uh to as that kind of that upgrade you know mm -hmm. you're looking to because there's a lot of people that aren't so heavily into it right i mean mm -hmm. you don't necessarily need to put a hundred and something dollar servo you know in your drag car uh, so, so that's a, that's a product that we have available now that's geared towards that market, which is booming. It is booming. I, I, I'm in threatening to build one so I can look at it. Um, not race it. It's definitely, yeah. it, I think, I think actually we're probably going to see that genre of RC racing on, on mainstream TV before anything else, to be honest. The, uh, the people that are involved in it now, like Big Chief and all that there. So, uh, it's amazing to see what's happening. Uh, Let's 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 rewind it back a little bit too. Uh, I, I I meant to ask this, but when, when was High Tech founded? It's it's a Korean company, correct? Yes, yeah, Korean company. Um, uh, you know, I, I'm I'm trying to remember exactly, but mm -hmm. um, it was uh, I believe it was somewhere around um, like 1982 mm -hmm. uh, that that High Tech was was founded in in Korea. Uh, and then uh, partnered up with a company called uh, Polk. Um, and so it was, uh, they, they brought that in for a while and there was, there was some kind of mixture of, of products. Um, uh, and then, and then it became, you know, high tech. Uh, and then RCD was another company that built receivers. And so then high tech bought out RCD and became high tech RCD and then started building receivers and uh, aftermarket receivers when 72 megahertz was real popular and you had to have a special mm -hmm. narrow band receiver and stuff like that so so that was a kind of a big part of our of our business was the receiver side of things and and then of course you know the radios as we you know came further along more advanced radios as we right as we because th you guys multiplex used to be a servo radio company too you was 
Oh, so cool. Multiplex was purchased by High Tech by okay. the owner of High Tech. Okay. So not necessarily High Tech, um, but uh, purchased by uh, the owner of High Tech, and so two two separate companies, uh, kind of sister companies. And um, with the Multiplex, there was the models. They had uh, some radio stuff. Most of the re- the servos were were uh, then replaced by High Tech servos. So okay. everything Multiplex is now a High Tech servo. Uh, Multiplex does still sell radio videos in Europe, but, um, not, not here really in the U S although there is, uh, we decided that, that the hobby, that the model side of things was, um, just a lot of effort, um, and not a lot of return Mm -hmm. and a lot of storage, a lot of shipping. And so, uh, we've decided that, that we're not going to import the multiplex models anymore, but there is a new, a new, uh, importer. Uh, and, uh, he actually was the, was the old importer. Uh, before high tech uh, uh, purchased the company, so his name is Carlton Spindle, and he's yes, got a, I remember him. You know, I bought some servers from that guy back in the day. Yeah, yeah. So he's got a website. If you're looking for any multiplex stuff, it's it's uh, Mr. Multiplex. So it's mrmpxhobbies.com. I remember Carlton. I remember buying yeah. his servers back yeah, in the day. Yeah, Carlton's a good guy. Yeah, the, whew, that yeah. He used to race fifth scale, real big in a fifth scale. I think he had it. Even had a track up in up in. Uh, uh, the LA area for a while, they had their worlds there at one point. And, uh, so that's another thing that's kind of taken off is that fifth scale stuff. Uh, and offered. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and, and you know, on road, on road as well. And, yeah. uh, you know, I, uh, the, the track up in, uh, uh steel city up in Fontana, mm-hmm. they, they're racing a lot of the, the fifth scale on road up there. Yeah. They have stuff. the nationals next in the, Weekend of the 14th, I, I think so. I think so. Yeah. I've got a fifth scale uh, spec spec five car that I haven't I haven't uh, got out there to run yet. But, I love uh, fifth scale on road, man. I think it looks yeah. so awesome. It's, just, it's almost like running stock because it slows things down a little yeah. bit. So you know, because the bigger stuff, you and know? they look real. They look so like they use body shells that are realistic looking. They look real, like yeah. I, the action. I love yeah. it. That's my I like uh, eight scale off road. I, unlike eight guy knows moon buggies. Um, <laughs> good stuff. Uh, all right. So getting in when you guys did get into the into, I, I must. I just have a quick question. So I'm assuming like servo needs for like an eight scale car differ from anything. Differ. I would say differ from a lot of different things. Did you guys make specific off road servers or was it just something that kind of? Or do you like you no. know what I mean? Is it anything specific? Specifically no, um, there, the, we did actually um, try making servos that were specific for cars mm-hmm. uh, that had a little shorter lead on them uh, that, you know, but the, the thing with that is that it's, everything is similar. So like the 9381, for example, that's for top of the line servo, brushless servo. Uh, that's our giant scale airplane servo. That's our, you know, eight scale off-road servo. That's the, you know, gotcha. anything that, that you, you know, for, for the, the, the echelon top level of, of performance. Um, and so when you have, if you have a different version and, and there's companies that do that, you know, they've yeah. got surface surface versions and maybe it's got a smaller lead, a shorter lead or something like that. And, and I, I know, you know, sometimes it's, it's hard to deal with the little bit longer lead, but you know, you, typically just kind of stuff it in your, in your radio box and it's, it's going to be okay. But, uh, we, we do just make, you know, servos kind of as general servos. When you start making specific servos, then you limit your market. Okay. And, and then you look at the sales and you're like, well, you know, is this even worth it? And, and so, so we just decided that, that we would have, you know, one, one version, we may make something that's, you know, more geared towards something, mm-hmm. you know, where we have a speed, speedier version versus a torquier version. Okay. Um, but in most cases, uh, you know, uh, torque sells the, the higher torque models sell more than the higher speed models. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and some people think that, you know, Oh, I need this fastest servo. And what they don't realize too, is it, is that, the with with some servos you know again I, like i mentioned with 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 our brushless they don't slow down but but you you can you put your put your foot on top of your car and start moving the wheels you know it goes from zip 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 to burr 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 mm-hmm. you know and uh that's that's going to affect it so when you're at the end of the straightaway you know going 60 miles an hour and you go to turn 
the high speed servo isn't going to have that, that, that initial turn in, you know, maybe quick through the S's when you're going slow, but, but the higher speed stuff, you know, it really, it can bog down and it can, it can give you an inconsistent feel. So, so, um, normally the, uh, the torqueier servos are kind of the way to go as long as they're not too slow. Right. Um, but in most cases, like said, 9381, which is, about 0.13 transit time uh, at uh, at 7.4 volts. That's uh, that's where uh, you know plenty plenty fast for for you know most most vehicles. See, so you that was a great analogy. You used up talking about the high the high speed servo going into a corner. At 60, that like that puts it all into perspective. Um, I, I think people need more power anyway because the, maybe these servos are too fast for them anyway. They need to turn them yeah. down a little bit in the radio. So. Yeah. And, and also the same thing with the, you know, mechanical setup too, is that, you know, if you got a longer horn, the longer arm, you know, the further out it is, you know, that's going to give you a little bit more speed. Mm -hmm. uh, it's going to give you a little less resolution. It's not going to be quite as precise. Uh, going to give you less torque. So, you know, there's sometimes those little fine, fine, fine lines of moving, you know, just a little bit, you've got, you know, a couple holes to choose from. Um, you know, if you want a little bit quicker speed, go to the outside hole. If you want a little more torque, go to the inside hole. Uh, you know, those are things that, that, uh, have a factor as well. And especially on the airplane side, you know, where they use really big, big horns. Um, you know, the closer you are to the center line of the servo, the more torque you're going to have, the more resolution you're going to have, uh, less physics, load. Man. Physics, man. Yeah. Physics. All physics. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of lot of mechanical stuff, you know, you gotta yeah. you gotta think about too. So as we was talking, like high tech was booming. I remember you guys had like Adam Drake on your team. You had, you know, like oh, like it was booming. It was like you was really into surface racing. And then We had we had a guy, uh Billy. Um Billy Ho was his kind of his nickname, Billy Tompkins. Oh yeah. Uh he, he was he would come out to you know, we would send him to the events. And, uh, so he got to go and represent and, and that was something that, that, you know, is always good. Anytime you can have somebody out there, right. uh, you know, you, you get more exposure. Uh, so, uh, and, and it's been a little tough with me where, you know, everything kind of comes down where I, I'm in charge of, of, of what he was doing. Um, and also the air side of things and also the, uh, you know, um, sales and, and everything. So I, I haven't been able to get out there. Um, you know, we do have, we do have team drivers. Mm -hmm. uh, you were mentioned uh, Mike Walker, yeah. uh, who's one of our, one of our, our team drivers and kind of, kind of rep um, for, for the area. So, mm -hmm. so uh, we are looking for, for more people to help represent. So if uh, you know, viewers out there, if you feel that uh, you, you could help represent high tech and you like our products or want to try our products, because, you know, we feel we've got uh, as good, if not better product quality, everything, you know, as far as uh, servos go on the market, there's, you know, a lot of good stuff out there. But, you know, when it comes down to the technology that we're utilizing in, in our servos, I really feel there's nothing better than like that 9381 for durability, performance, uh, you know. So so those are those are things that we do. You know, we have a team. Uh, we offer, you know, discounted, uh, price on, on the product. And, you know, we, we always are looking for people that, that will help represent. And, and for us, it's, it's all about the, the person. It's all about the, you know, the person personality, you know, there's a lot of fast guys out there, but you know, it's, that's not really what it's all about necessarily. Yeah. You want to win, you want to do well, but you know, when you have a, a sponsored driver, you want somebody that's out there representing you in good faith. And, and, and it's not all about just me, 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 and, and I need to win. Yeah. Um, you know, Mike's been good for, I mean, that's how we got connected through Mike. Um, mm -hmm. so that's, that's great. Um, I'm seeing he's even like you guys are sponsoring some race time events and stuff like that because, I hadn't seen high tech in the surface side of things for a while. So I guess that's kind of when you got, I was, I mean, obviously you guys were before, but then it was a spat, like maybe I just wasn't paying attention, but it kind of wasn't as big. You guys wasn't as big in the racing side of things for some time, for a little while. I kind of wanted to know what happened there. Did you guys decide to focus on something else? Did you go more industrial with your work or what happened there? Well, we, we, we did, we have gone industrial, mm -hmm. um, but you know, there's still the, the, the RC side of things. So, but you know, as the, 
the markets changed. The markets, you know, definitely been depressed, you know, at least, you know, for the last decade, it was just mm-hmm. kind of on the downside. We, we kind of got this bump. I mean, it was almost like this COVID bump of, you know, people were, were sitting at home and they didn't have anything to do and they, you know, were out spending money on their hobby, you know? So uh, we definitely saw something like that, but, but in order to, to be able to go to these, to these events, to get somebody out there all the time, I mean, it, it takes a lot of dedication and, and we, it, it was, it was, you know, something where we ended up having to shrink mm-hmm. a little bit. Um, and, and, uh, unfortunately that was where, you know, Billy was, was our guy mm-hmm. and was no longer out there, you know, able to do that. And, uh, for me, it wasn't something that, that, you know, I was so involved in that I could just step in. And so that's why we're, you know, trying to kind of expand again, mm-hmm. trying to get people, you know, key people, core people, uh, you know, maybe, uh, you know, have this, have this kind of regional sort of thing where we look for, uh, you know, like team manager. Uh, I have uh, Brian Wright out here on the West coast is, uh, is helping us out. So he gets, he gets around, he gets the most of the events. He's, he's, you know, uh, doing eight scale, doing electric. Sweet. Uh, so, so he's, uh, he's, you know, out there helping look for people and stuff like that. So, so, but, you know, as far as corporate level goes and granted, I mean, you know, I haven't traveled at all. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, there was, there was a shutdown of, you know, we're not going anywhere for, for the last, you know, year and a half. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I do plan on going out to that big, you mentioned the, the Joe Nall, Nall in the fall. Yeah. So that'll be our big airplane event that we go to where there's 10,000 people. I know it's amazing. And, you know, there's there's uh, there's a uh, 1500 pilots you know registered and uh, it's just miles of miles of stuff so uh, but i'd like to get out to to another you know another event uh you know get you know i, I definitely again i I've, I've been around i i would love to go out and race but you know it's it's so tough to be able to to get to even close to being you know, at a, at a level of, of, you know, satisfaction and going out to an event and having all your gear and being prepared and stuff like that. I mean, there's so much that, that goes into it. Like, so I said, I like on road, I can pull my car out of a paper sack and throw it on the track. And from the year ago that it ran last time and it still goes okay, you know, <laughs> and uh, you can't do that with off road. That's for sure. Okay. Can we talk a little bit about the in- industrial side of, of high tech? Cause I find that yeah. pretty amazing. I mean, you showed me a servo earlier. I don't know if you can show it, but yeah. Yeah. Oh, let man, me, let me grab the it. Biggest so, servo I've ever seen in my oh, life. This is uh well, let me, let me get something for, for reference here. So hold okay. on a second. Okay, so so we've got standard size servo. Mm-hmm. Okay, so then you've got the fifth scale, fifth scale, fifth scale servo. Okay, so now we've got. Jeez, look at that. The SG fifty. Wow. So this is um, this is over. I think it's it's five hundred pounds. Um, that it, that it can pull. So it's, um, it, it is made for, for industrial use. It's right. obviously, you can see how big it is. You can see the interface, there's different interfaces. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's even a little QR code on there. So, uh, I don't know, scan it, see what it does, but, uh, so it's waterproof, but it's also filled with mineral oil. This little hole right here is where it gets filled so that it can withstand like extreme depths. So it could be used in like a, you know, an underwater, um, you know, vehicle. Mm -hmm. Uh, And, and there's a lot of other, there's a lot of other servos that are, you know, smaller than this. There's also a lot of servos that are similar in in size to what we have that are uh, utilized, say a magnetic encoder or um, a different interface. Mm -hmm. Like instead of it being just the three wire, it's what we call like a can where it's like four wires with a, a feedback so that you know exactly where everything is, you know, the position of the servo all the time. Uh, there's a lot of bigger brushless servos that we have, but you know, that's all, you know, designed for, uh, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of military stuff, uh, drones, um, you know, again, underwater drones as well. The, um, 
the mil, uh, uh, medical devices, you know, mm. utilized in a lot of medical devices, like uh, stuff like that. It's amazing. Like just, what? I mean, it, it just, just whatever. I mean, I, I, I can't say everything for sure, but, but I mean, you know, it's like just little devices where it's like they're taking blood or something and it shuts something off or turns really? something on or, you know, and so, uh, uh, just, you know, actuators that are used in, in all sorts of applications. Give me an example of something that's using a servo or, or something that we probably wouldn't even expect in everyday life. Uh, well, there's also like the animation and stuff like that, you know, so like the, when you go to Disneyland and the, the, you see these things moving around, there's high tech servos and a lot of that stuff. Uh, so, but yeah, there's, there's a lot of stuff that, that I don't even know about, or I can't even say about, you know, really? that's, that's, you know, that, yeah. Or, or, but, uh, yeah, there's, a, there's, uh, there's a lot of applications for that. Uh, some of the other, uh, things that high tech is involved in is, is we do have a, a commercial drone, uh, division mm -hmm. where we have, a we have like a, uh, airplane, uh, it's a wing, a flying wing. We also have a quadcopter that is all automated. And so what you do is you, you, uh, set up, uh, like you have a tablet and you would have like a Google maps view of something. And you would say you're on a, you're out in a field, uh, you know, there's a farmer's field or something and he wants to, he wants to, you know, see where his cows are at or something. It will actually just map the, the whole area, fly back and forth. You just launch it, you know, flies automated, you launch it, it'll uh, fly, uh, stitch everything together on the map and you can see, see, you know, all the whole, the whole whole, uh, the whole farm. Uh, you can also, we've also done where we check power lines as you, as we go and, um, stuff like that. We can have, uh, uh, like infrared, you can search for the, uh, like a uh, hot spots or cold spots. Like when you look for like when they're watering something and you can look to see where maybe you have a water leak mm. and stuff like that. So, wow. uh, and we, yeah, yeah. And, uh, so there's a couple different, different, uh, types of drones that we offer for that. Uh, you know, obviously this is real high end, very, very sophisticated stuff. Uh, we're about to go to a the big show is the AUVSI show, which is really where, uh, all the companies that do that type of thing, uh, would go and they haven't been able to do that for a couple of years. Interest, you know, that, that side of the RC industry really interests me. Um, like I used to operate a radio controlled shotcrete robot in tunnels. Okay. Right. And that had like a, um, a box where you had to, you know, had four joysticks and it was, it was, right, it was like right. a boom and it just, it had different joints. You can move it like that. And like, I'm guessing like, like we, when we, like for me, cause I'm just so like racing, that's all I think about in RC and cars and planes and all that stuff. I never, sometimes it blows my mind when I think about the other, the other industrial side of RC, like, especially like with the military, with so many things like now, like just the technology that we have, we can do so many things that are RC related to help things out and do things. I imagine that industry is just booming. Like I know a few guys that race cars that like, I'm pretty sure they fly. Like I know one guy probably flies drones for like a, a oil company. Like, okay. Yeah, yeah. Stuff like that. And you know, when I was in Abu Dhabi working, I used to see all the drones flying cross and it's crazy. Yeah. yeah. It's amazing so, yeah that's that stuff. stuff that we do. Um, yeah. We have a division that, that does that, that goes out. We also sell, like again, sell the product so mm -hmm. that people can do it themselves. And then we go train them. Um, but we do have, uh, have a division where, you know, they'll go out and map, map stuff, you know, mm -hmm. uh, take bird's eye view of, of, uh, you know, areas. And you have to have, you have to be licensed for that. You have okay. to, you can't just go out and buy your drone anywhere. Um, you know, it, it there's certain certain regulations and, and and again that's that's some of the things where you know some of those regulations are getting a little strict where you've got to you know you do have to have a license they even had it to where you had to have a license to fly a radio control model mm -hmm. uh, and they decided to take that away Crazy. which you know that was that was that was just i don't know they just wanted to get your five bucks or something for that but um. <laughs> probably <laughs> Yeah, so, yeah. So e-buggy, e-truggy is growing really big here in our, in our genre. Um, e-buggy is un enormous. E-truggy is growing. Uh, I know you guys have a nice, cool charger uh, geared yes, towards e-buggy yes. guys, like to charge up two batteries and whatnot like and stuff like that. Um, I don't have the name. If me, I should have had that up in my notes here. But I did. Uh, so there's a new the new charger that we have is the RDX2. I'll, I'll go grab it so you can take a little closer look. Sure. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
So the RDX2, I'm going to go backwards on this, we go. RDX2 Pro. So it's, um, it's a dual port charger. It's uh, 130 watts per port. Uh, so you've got uh, AC, DC. So you've got the AC power, you've got the DC power. You can also use it as a power supply. Mm -hmm. uh, so you can power up to like 25 volts. So you could power up like tire warmers, uh, you know, engine heater, Heaters. you know, something like that. Uh, you can run that uh, as well. But uh, this one will do uh, up to 14 amps. And like I said, 130, uh, 130 watts. So, so just to get a little, little bit of a, of a lesson is that, you know, watts is amps times volts. And, uh, sometimes, you know, like we'll have a charger that says it'll do, uh, 10 amps and six S, but you know, it doesn't necessarily mean it does six S at 10 amps. You're, you're always limited by the wattage of the charger. Mm. So at 130 watts with a four S pack, you can charge about nine amps. Okay. Um, so that's, you know, in most cases you're looking at 5,000 milliamp battery, 6,000 milliamp battery. So, you, so you're, you know, you're going to charge in, you know, 40 minutes, okay. you know, somewhere around there. Um, this has a Bluetooth dongle too, right? Yep. Yep. Okay. So there's a, there's an add on little Bluetooth dongle and that way you can utilize an app on your phone, either your iPhone or your uh, Android device. And you can, you can program and monitor the, the charge, uh, through your phone. Um, so if you're, you know, out, out, you know, I, I don't want to say term marshaling cause you don't want to look at your phone term marshaling, but, but you know, before you start, before the race starts, you can check to see, make sure it's charging. Cause the last thing you want to do is get back and you'd be like, no, it didn't charge or it's, it just shut off or, you know, I forgot to push start. You know, so can you do that from the phone though? Or you can yeah, just monitor? Oh yeah, yeah. You can oh, yeah. start it on the phone, you can stop it, you can monitor it, you can see where you're at, you could change the charge rate, you could yeah, absolutely. And this is for it, it's dual, right? It, you can charge two batteries yeah, at once. Yeah, oh. two ports. So um and each port has 130 watts, so it's two hundred. You did say that. Total. I just wasn't paying attention. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, some of the chargers they'll have uh you know, they'll share the wattage. Right. Um some of our our other chargers uh, it'll be like 100 watts, but it uh it divides the wattage between the two ports and and you can you could, you know, have more wattage on one than the other or you could split it 50-50 or whatever. So it depends on how big a battery you're charging to typically how many how much wattage you need. So smaller batteries don't need as much wattage to get the same charge rate. Sweet, I like that. I'm, I'm I need to. I'm in the market for a new charger. I might have to. We need one of these. Yeah, I'm gonna have to get me one of them and some high tech service for. And have I build another car that actually goes racing? All right, um, good stuff, man. Um, so let's talk about the future. What's the future looking like for high tech? Uh, any immediate plans we can expect coming from you guys? Anything new? Uh, anything racing related? Well, um, so as far as new stuff goes, um, there, there are some new servos in the works. Um, we did uh, spend a lot, of, a lot of energy on the industrial side um, because it's such, such growth area mm -hmm. for us. Um, you know, we do feel that we have, you know, some very, very good core components, core servos that, that still, you know, uh, are, are, you know, uh, competitive. And like I said, 9381 is our most popular higher end servo. Um, but you know, it just seems that everybody's going to this more and more torque. They're just fitting more and more torque into the same size servos. And, and as you know, we've experienced over the years is torque is torque is what sells. So whenever you look at a, at a servo and you're, you're deciding, you might say, okay, well, this one's faster or this one's stronger or whatever. So I'm going to go with that one. Um, like I said, this, the, our brush of servos don't slow down under load. So, mm. so there's no need to have the extra torque, but if it's something where you're going to say, well, this guy's got, you know, another hundred inch ounces over you, then it's got to be better Then it doesn't matter what the reality is. It's what the perception is. So, uh, and, and, you know, again, as the technology progresses, I mean, you know, like you mentioned the 7955, you know, back in the day, right. It was 333 inch ounces of torque. Well, that was a ton, you know, and that was when servos were only getting out 180 or so. Mm -hmm. And we come out with 333. So, um, you know, the, the 9381s at, at 486, uh, and, and it's at 486 regardless of the voltage. 
So it's at 486, at 4.8 volts, at 6 volts, at 7.4, at 8.4. It's only the speed that actually changes, mm. and that's because the, the, the motor is regulated. Uh, what we found, too, is that even during the testing to test the, the torque um, where you would either pull something or push something, you can actually damage the gears just by, you know, doing that because even the titanium gears would start to, to, to see signs of wear when you're, you're pushing it to that level. So, so the torque that these servos have is there's a tremendous amount of headroom. Mm -hmm. You're, you're not really, you know, there's only so much that a case can take. Mm -hmm. You're not putting, you know, you're putting a big servo in a big car because you need to have that, that dissipation of, of energy. You know, the, you put, it's not like we're running these small servos, the standard size servos in fifth scale cars, but they still have the same torque. Okay. You know, so, so there's just a point at which how much can a standard size servo take? So, so right now the standard size servos, the torque ratings on them are, is more than really the, the cases could take if you want to max out what their full capability is. Gotcha. Um, so a lot of it is, is more of, we can do it. So we're going to build it with more torque. Right. Um, torque you know. sells, like you says, the yeah. more torque, yeah. the more people want, even though you don't need 800 ounces of torque. You like it, the it sound of good it. on paper. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, so there's, there's, uh, some new servos in the works, uh, some new circuits, uh, in the works. Uh, we have, uh, our, so the, the, the Kokoni circuit, which is the, the 93, uh, like 81, 9380, uh, we have a 9360, which is high speed, 9370, which is mid speed. And then 9380, 9381, which is the higher torque. Uh, so those, those use the, the Kokoni with a regenerative circuit. Uh, in some cases, you know, that's, that's a little much. The electric cars with the BEC circuits, uh, they don't necessarily like that feedback that comes back into the, into the BEC. Mm. So uh, we actually include a device called a PAD, uh, it's PAD. It's a power absorption device. And so what it does is it allows for that, that power that comes back um, from the regen circuit to just be absorbed instead of going back into the electronics. Mm. So on the electric side of things, in most cases, the BEC seem to be like, seem to handle it. Um, but when you're, you know, using a, a four cell battery, you've got to drop the voltage down. So you're definitely going through a voltage reducing, uh, you know, circuit. And, and a lot of times they don't, they don't like that. So you, you want to run the pad for that. Uh, we do have a low profile servo called the, the DB777. And the D is the, uh, is, is our digital circuit. Uh, we have like the D series servos, like the D955, the D950. So instead of having the 7,000 series, like you were familiar with, mm -hmm. we have the, the D series now. When the D series, what it does is it has a, has a soft start feature. It has a, um, uh, overload protection as an auto gain function to prevent uh, any jittering. And so we do have some more brushless servos that are going to be out with that, that circuit. Uh, there has been a challenge uh, recently uh, with the uh, chips. Uh, oh, if you're familiar, right. yes. uh, I can't get a shortage. PlayStation five from my son because of that. Mm -hmm. So, um, so that's something that high tech actually has been proactive about. Um, we kind of saw it coming. Uh, we've, we've changed some manufacturers in some cases, uh, so that, uh, the availability would be there, but, uh, the lead times and the prices have just gone up. Material costs have gone up. Um, so, you know, unfortunately that's what we're seeing in almost everything, you know, across mm -hmm. the board now is, is that prices that have been, have been going up. Um, but the, uh, you know, high tech has always been dedicated to, you know, to servo manufacturing and that's our, that's our bread and butter. And so with the, uh, you know, the RC side of things, we have, we have every possible servo, you know, imaginable, um, analog servos, which not a lot of people make anymore. So something like a 645, which is an analog servo, which is about, you know, $35 servo. That's one of our bread and butter servos for, you know, your basher out there looking to upgrade from a standard stock mm -hmm. servo, want to put something in, you know, his, uh, his Traxxas truck or something like that. You know, we've got, we have all aspects of, of, you know, the, the range of, of prices and, and levels of components that we use. And, but I do always tell people that you want to match the level of, 
of servo, you know, to the level of vehicle, you know, um, you know, if, if you're, if you are running eight scale, you know, uh, off-road, regardless if you're a basher or not, that, that those vehicles need higher end, you know, digital servos, uh, so that, so that they'll live. Sweet. How about, is there anything like that you think we'll see? I don't know if high tech will do it. You, you know more about the electronics side, but there's any like new technology in the works that you think we're going to see here in the upcoming years concern it for racing. So the, only, the only thing, uh, you know, I mentioned is that there's, there's the, the different protocol. Um, mm -hmm. and so the, uh, with that, you know, we can see more automated stuff on like the airplane airplane side. So we do have, uh, you know, we were doing some testing where we had like a helicopter that's fully, fully automated mm -hmm. and that, that you can just, you know, tell it what to do and it's going to, it's going to do it and it's going to feedback. It's going to know everything that's going on, you know, what, what, what are, the position of every servo is, you know, what it needs to do, how it needs to compensate, stuff like that. Um, you know, for the, for the surface side, you know, it just seems like there's really not a lot of, of change. There's, there's just, you know, more refinement, you know, um, everything seems to be going, you know, with, as it becomes cheaper too, you know, the, all the aluminum cases and stuff. I remember, you know, years ago when we looked at aluminum cases, it was going to add $50 to the cost of the servo, you know, now it's, it's, you know, we have our own, our own CAD machines. We can, we can do it. You know, it's the investments already there, you know, so, so there's going to be more aluminum, aluminum cases, waterproof, you know, might as well make it waterproof. Why not? Um, and, but as far as any real changes go there, you know, I, I, I think that everything's going to kind of, kind of go still the same way. It's just, everything kind of gets refined as we go. You know, I was like, are these, are these servers fully waterproof? I mean, I've taken my trail truck into some deep water. Mm -hmm. I always wonder why we didn't do that in the eight scale side. Is it just, is it just more money to make them waterproof or, or what is it? To be fully waterproof. So now most of the servos have, are what we call, would consider splash proof. Okay. Okay. So they're going to have O-rings throughout the case. Um, but as you, in, as you introduce pressure, that's where, you know, you have to have everything sealed up, mm. especially like where the wire comes out. Um, so uh, in most cases, your servos are going to be able to, you know, be splashed upon. Uh, and then when we did come out with our first original waterproof servos, there there are ratings. There's a specific IP rating. Um, so our servos are IP67, meaning that they can be in a meter of water for 30 minutes. Mm, okay. Got you. So, yeah, we brought like a fish tank and we had them underneath the water moving around and stuff like that. When we were at our show, I remember when we were debuting them. But there are some servos that say they're waterproof. Um, but unless they say it's IP67, mm -hmm. then that's not, you know, or IP68. We have some, like I said, the, this is the, the, this big giant guy. This is, this is IP68. So this is, it can go up to like a hundred meters or something like that. It might be even more than that. Uh, but, uh, we do offer waterproof servos and, and the analog like high torque, like the called the 646 WP, which is like a 645, mm -hmm. uh, in a waterproof case. We also have the smaller one, uh, the HS, uh, uh, 80, 5086, which is like for the smaller, like uh, 116 scale okay. guys, like the little crawler guys. There's a, uh, the, the D956, which is, uh, like our, uh, D954, which is similar to 7955 is the, is the closest thing as far as, as performance goes, you know, 400 inch ounces of torque, uh, steel gear, um, you know, heat sink case, uh, th those are, those would be good for, for, you know, the crawlers and stuff like that, where you're, where you're going to get them wet. You're going to drive them through water. Awesome, man. Hey, servers, like, I'm not going to lie. It's so easy now with servers. I remember that used to be such a big headache back in the day, but I mean, the technology is so, so not just with you guys, but just with servers period. But, um, it's, if people knew the heartache that I, we had to go through back in the day compared to now, yeah. they would have quit racing a long time ago. Uh, it's awesome to see. I, I never would have thought I'd be interviewing the guy from high tech ever in life. So that's cool for me.
That's great. Um, I'm, I'm really happy to be here. It was fun, fun chatting with you. And, oh yeah. It's been a, you know, it's been a um, great conversation. Yeah, I learned a lot. Yeah. No, I appreciate it. And, and, you know, uh, I'm, I'm going to get out there. I'll, I'll definitely, uh, you know, get back out there as, as, as we're able to travel again, mm-hmm. you know, that's, that's the thing is it was just a crazy world for the last year and a half. And, and, you know, I'm looking forward to getting back out there and, and, if, you know, there's, uh, you know, some, some events that I can drive to or something like that, then, uh, you know, maybe we'll get to, we'll get to hook up. Sure, man. Sure. 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 I think that'd be cool. We could have, we could, I'm sure we have a lot of stories to talk and tell about. That'd for be sure. awesome. All right. Um, for anybody interested in possibly getting some high tech equipment or becoming being a part of the team, I know you said this already, but they can contact uh, obviously Mike Walker, probably on the East Coast area. He's kind of dealing with that. Uh, can they can they contact you or, or the, and the yeah other? Okay. yeah yeah certainly so um, uh, you know my email is Mike M at hightechrcb.com. Uh, send me a resume and then you know like I said we do have you know kind of team managers that that you know manage certain areas and stuff and maybe maybe it's something where you're in an area that we don't we don't really have anybody and, and that's a, that's a, a role you, you'd be interested in. And, and like I said, it's all about the people. It's all about family, yeah. you know, uh, high tech's really, you know, got a big family and we, we treat, treat our customers that way. And so that's really kind of what sets us apart. And we're always looking for good people to help represent. And so if it's something, you know, you feel you could help represent, uh, for high tech, uh, you know, send me a resume and we can go from there. There you go, people. Uh, also, if you guys are interested in just purchasing some of these servers or the, or their charger, which is really badass, yeah, yeah, you can go to hightechrc.com uh, and where to buy, and you can find all their, I believe, a main servo city. It's a, a bunch of different websites you guys yeah, have there yeah. that you can purchase from there, and you and yeah, just give them a hey, give them a check. I know. For a lot of new people that are coming into the hobby, they may not know who high tech is, but I'm telling you, it's all I used to run back in the day when I was racing hardcore. So awesome, man. Thank you for coming on. Thank you guys for supporting the podcast too. I appreciate that. And um, yeah, we're happy to. Yeah, we should do this again, like uh, maybe in a few months and just see what's going on. And I don't know, maybe we'll see what happens, man. I appreciate it. it. Cool. Yeah, no, I appreciate it too. All right, Mike, thank you for your time. Remember, guys, if you are interested in anything high tech, hit up Mike. Hit up Mike. Walk on the East Coast. What was the guy on the West Coast to? Uh, Brian, Brian Wright. Brian Wright. If you yep. feel if you feel that you might want to be a team rep for them, hit them up. If you're the right person, if you fit into the family, there you go. It, it'd probably be the last server you ever buy because you won't get any more. Trust me. <laughs> Mike. You have a good you have a good one. Thank you for your time. Uh, we look forward to whatever high tech uh, comes out with and comes out with in the next few months or the, by the end of the year. Hopefully, we get to meet at a race one time and have a uh, a frosty beverage and uh, yeah yeah talk RC. Good. Maybe you let me drive your fifth scale. Then then I would <laughs> definitely need to drive it first. <laughs> I know they're so expensive. They're cool. What was it again? You got a, uh, um, it's the spec five. So it's nice is that it's like, everything's all like a, like a spec class. So you have to, you're limited to what you can have. So I don't have to worry about getting out spent, you know? Oh, oh what company makes that? Uh, FG. Okay. Okay. So FG is the spec class. That might be the class yeah. I have to run. Thank you for your time. Um, yeah, man, you have a good weekend and hopefully you get back out there and get into these shows because I know, like for me, that's something I enjoy is getting out and being around know. people. Yeah. And getting out of the office is, yeah. is a good thing too. Oh man, I'm I'm glad I got to know you as well. Mike said you was cool and he was right. So All right. Thank you cool, for man. Your... I really appreciate it. Cool, man. Have a good one. All right. Take care. Bye bye. Sunset University Raceway, the home of El Paso's world famous motocross inspired eight scale off road track. The Showers family has over 20 years' experience creating one of the premier tracks in the USA. Their world class facility has everything in handicap accessibility, covered beds, gate starts, space for parking RVs, trailers, and lights for night racing. Follow SCRC on Facebook under Sun City RC Raceway for a Yes, thank you to Joey Showers, Corbin, and Christian for their support of the No Name RC Podcast and bringing you the SCRC, Sun City RC Raceway, Dawn and Quiet. Usually we reserve the end of a podcast for a rant, but we're going to, I got a good question and I wanted to bring it up and kind of be our conclusion. 
But uh, thank you to SCRC for their support. They have a nice race, big race coming up there. Ryan Lutz is going there with the USRC. The first time on the West Coast for USRC racing series. So Rob Isaac and, and Ryan Lutz are going over there. If you're in the vicinity, you want to go check out an awesome, if you're in the vicinity and want to check out an awesome RC facility, hang around a bunch, a bunch of group, good people and go check out Sun City RC Raceway. Tell the Shaw's family you heard about it on the NNRC and they'll shoot, I'm telling you, they'll roll out the red carpet for you like they did for us. So thank you. All right, Max. So I actually got this question. Uh, for, it was I was going to ask this in the Beach RC thing, but I thought this was a good question that we could probably just mull over and wish this wishful thinking. But the Olympics is going on right now. I haven't watched much of it. I did watch some skateboarding. Shout out, Bermuda won its first gold medal out in the Olympics. Flora Duffy. I don't know what she wanted in, what but she wanted. Boarding? Huh? Oh, okay. I think she's like you a triathlete or something. Know which sport it was? Triathlete, I think. Huh? I don't I think she's a triathlete, triathlete okay. one or something, yeah. She's super bad. She's like, she's badass. That's the only yeah. goal. Bermuda only has two medals in the Olympics. A bronze back in the seventies from box boxing and this. So yeah. <laughs> uh congratulations to her. And um so this question comes from Evan Osborne. He asks If RC racing was in the Olympics in Tokyo, what classes deserve to be there and who would win gold in each? A All scale, right, let's not, nitro. let's not, this is not going to turn to a bitch session about what classes deserve to be in there. Let's just be, tool let's just, drive an electric, eight scale buggy. And then, two drive electric, eight scale buggy, and 10 scale touring electric. Really? Maybe, maybe, maybe eight scale nitro on road. I would put eight scale maybe. nitro on road for, well, yeah, I would put, well, I would have two off road and two on road classes. So, exactly. So eight scale, eight scale off road, mm-hmm. eight scale on road, touring, and ten scale two wheel drive off road. All right. So like, who's gonna win? Any any who's gonna win two wheel drive? Who's gonna be your girl in two wheel drive? Uh, Hard for for the Olympics. You know what? For the Olympics, it's gonna be Cavalieri. No one else is gonna be it. Okay. Right. Okay. Because it's like the Cavalieri. You cut out a buggy. What did you say? It was Cavalier in, oh. in two wheel drive? Cavalier in two wheel drive for Nitro Buggy. God, that's tough. But I got to go on Aro, though. Really? I got to go on Aro. Yeah. Really? Over Mayfield on Aro. Yeah. Wow. Okay. 10 scale touring car? 10 scale touring car. God, that's difficult at the moment. Coelho? Because, like, maybe, but like, when was the last time Coelho raced? Oh, uh, this weekend. Can't think of it. Where? They raced in Italy. Hagberg was there too. Yeah, but they also had an ETS. Yeah, and he didn't he go to ETS. There. I don't think they could go yeah, because of uh, the, the COVID. Yeah, but that's the thing. Like, Reinhardt is looking okay at times. But then again, like, he, he gets beaten <laughs> by Volker and then, like, all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. But I mean... Man, it's hard to go a ten scale in it. It's hard. Yeah, yeah. I, I'd say I'd say coil ho. I'd say coil ho still. But like that's that's a big if because like touring cars is so much about the car as well, mm. not only about the driver, you know. So How yeah, about- and then eight scale off road uh, on road. Um, I'd say, God, that's hard too. But mm-hmm. I gotta say, Balesti and Auto. Yeah, I would pick Balesti too. Those guys. Yeah. Um. All right. So here's my picks. Two wheel drive. Mm, I don't know. I'm like, I want to say the goat. I want to say the goat, but I kind of want to say Fend. And I don't. Yeah, but like, come on, Olympics. Like, five minute runs, maybe, but it's the Olympics. Like, you know the pressure. Even at the world. Uh, like I think time, Kev. I think Kev, like, Kev, who's been under more pressure than Kev in his career? Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah, that's so, why. Eight scale, eight scale nitro. Oh, sh- I'm going runner folk. I am a pure runner folk fanboy. Go Vikingo. Um, if it was if it was held in in California, in Southern California, I would go runner folk as well. US but it most US likely US. won't be. That's why I'm going Ongaro. Uh, ten scale on road. I don't know much about that. I'm gonna pick Hagberg because I'm friends with him. But maybe Hagberg when he was younger. <laughs> 
Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No but doubt. If it came down I, to I me, feel like he sort of he sort of transitioned a bit. He he is still a good driver, no mm-hmm. doubt. But he isn't that I'm winning the world type of driver. Right. You know? He he is very talented, but he has to work. I think he even explained. He'll tell you that I work. I have to work harder than like a Coelho or something exactly. like that. You know. Yeah. Yeah. So, but I mean, I. Like Reinhardt and Volker and all that. like all oh, those guys are fast, so it'd be hard to uh, call that. Um, touring is the hardest one to pick. So. An eight scale on road, I can't go wrong with Balestri. Uh, I don't really know if Coelho was running eight scale again. Maybe I yeah, would he pick can him. be good. But I I still like. I think Nato is really good. Mm-hmm. He just needs to get it. He gets like to keep the car running. For well, he'll be main. in Japan, so it'd be home turf for him. Oh yeah, I mean yeah. Then Naoto, no doubt. Yeah. Naoto is my pick. Yeah. Wow. You but can pick let's just, just let's just think about this because you said motorsports would never be on the Olympics. Skateboarding's in the Olympics, dude, and people never thought that would be there. Yeah, I was watching but, that the other day, and I was just like, wow. This went from get the fuck off the sidewalks and putting things up so you and being banned and this devil worshiping heathenistic type of you know sport back in the eighties and the nineties to like being in the Olympics. But do you know why they got into the Olympics? Because it's very I believe mainstream. The only reason it is, but I believe the only reason why they did was because of snowboarding is already in the Olympics. Mm-hmm. If snowboarding wasn't added first, skateboarding would still be lacking. They wouldn't be in the Olympics. So there's like nothing to drag RC in. There's not even any full scale like racing in there. So like that would need to happen first before RC could get, get in. I don't even want the Olympics. I just want to get on Netflix most obscure sports documentary. What's so small? We can't even get on that. That's yeah. bad. <laughs> we we are too obscure for a the Netflix most... documentary called Obscure Sports. Yeah, whatever. it's no shit. It's no I was I was just having this this conversation with a guy today. I said, Do you realize how small RC racing is in the big picture of RC? Yeah. You know, and how we think it's so big you know, like, be- because we think it's big because I mean, it's our world. Like, you know, yeah. like last, like last, last few months, I've started to realize how freaking big bashing is and how freaking small racing actually is. E- even in Finland, there's like thousands of cars, like probably like 10,000 or RC like cars, like Traxxas or Arma, you know, RTR cars, like over 10,000, easy, in only Finland where there's 5 million people. But like racing drivers, there's probably like, probably a few hundred at best. Yeah, I mean, I mean, just look at, I don't know, but it's a pipe dream. Wouldn't it be so cool, like 50 years from now, like RC <laughs> racing's on the Olympics and be like, I'll, I'll be probably dead. I'll be like, 90. I'm like, Max, you said it would never be on there. You'd be like Yoda. Yeah. You'd be talking all backwards. Mm-hmm. See, RC, in the Olympics it is. Wrong you was, Max. Wrong you was. <laughs> Weak oh with the God. force I, you are. I don't know. I what do you guys think? I don't want RC to be in the Olympics. You know what? Just to not see I think, I think that's enough. But I thought that was a great question. It's We can always dream. I, I'm, I mean, the dream, the Olympics, I would never see in my lifetime. I'm just hoping, like I said, I was hoping to get on on Red Bull TV or Monster TV or just f- give me, give us. Even that would be amazing. Give us 10 like minutes on TV. the most obscure sports in the world. Because we obscure. We don't want to agree. We don't want to think like that, but we are. What do you guys think? What do you yeah. listeners think? Do you think um, what, what classes and who would win gold? Well, let's just say the classes. Let's say two-wheel drive, eight-scale nitro, 10 scale on road, uh, 10 scale touring car on road, and eight scale fuel, like nitro off road. So, yeah. yeah. I think I, that's I, your. I think you said off road qualities, but on road. I think that's your. I think that's your. Okay, I did. Okay, I'm confused. I'm always confused. I think <laughs> that's. And tell us who you think will win gold. Do you agree with us? I got Cav, and I got. um, I got Cav, Ronafalk, Hagbird, and Balastri. Max has Cav. Ongaro, mm-hmm. Coelho, and Balestri. You picked Onato. So uh, Nato, Nato, yeah. Nato, Nato, Nato. I'm sorry, I said it wrong. I said Nato. It's Nato, Nato, Nato. Um, all right, man. <laughs> all right, Max. You know what? It was fun catching up with you. Uh, my birthday is this week. Yeah. Uh, I'm supposed to have a live. How, how old? You're 40. I go 43. 
Um, 43. Wow. Yeah, I'm getting old. I'm seven years from 50. <sighs> this, this RC stuff stressing me out. You're almost at half point of life. Have you thought about that? Yeah, I still got seven years to go to make it to that. So anything can happen. Yeah. We said this was going to be a short podcast, but it's been all in 50 oh, minutes. No. Yeah, yeah, I mean. Ah. Anyway. We always do this. You know what? Every, go way too, way you know what? Long. Thank you, Max, for your time. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. We greatly appreciate it. We can't do any of this without you guys. All the support. It's almost been three years we've been doing this. It's crazy to think that we've been doing this. Well, 136 episodes in. Well, not more than that. Oh, 136 episodes in. It's truly awesome. I'm enjoying I had a great time. This actually took my mind away from all the drama that's going on this week, this last couple of days. I'm having fun. Thank you, Max, for your time. Thank you, everybody. Thank you to the patrons. We can't do it without you guys. Thank you to everybody just showing some love to the sponsors, sponsors like Manscaped. Going in there, getting your grooming stuff in. I know you guys out there manscaping. That's what I'm talking about. And, um, yeah, just thank you, man. You know what? Thank you to all of our awesome sponsors. They are Mayako, Beach RC, TNR Fuels, High Tech RC, Techno RC, JQ Racing, Sun City RC Raceway, Lugs Racing Tires, Manscaped.com, Papa Willis Traction Tonic, our new sponsor, Donathan RC. Go and get your cables. Use that coupon code. Racecraft USA. We got a 10% coupon code for them. RCGP, House of RC, Maxis from the ground up. Thank you to everybody that's made this possible over the last two and a half years, two 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 and a half, two years, eight months. We're going on, we're going on three years here, and we're going on strong. So, thank you. Let's keep this ball rolling. I would love to get to another race this year. I don't know if it's going to happen. It might. Um, Max, what's your plans for this weekend? Racing if it's raining, but it's raining, so you're not racing because I thought all Europeans raced in rain, but obviously Finnish people don't. Yeah, I mean, most likely no racing due to the rain. Uh, Racing, then just chilling, taking a weekend off from just just chilling. Probably, I've been mean, like race the racing or practicing every single weekend or mm-hmm. doing something. I've been sort of weirdly busy in in the last few weeks. But yeah, now I'm just trying to take a weekend off. I enjoy it if if we can. If it's a race, then I'll be I'll be ready and ready to go, no doubt. But yeah, I, I'm kind of already hoping though that it be canceled because I don't want to go to watch the rain. That's the worst. Yeah, that's true. <clears throat> um, hopefully, I'm going to run yeah. my boat this weekend. I'm excited about that. I only have, mm-hmm. it takes two batteries, so I only have uh, two, one set of batteries. So I'll have to run it, bring it back, charge it. Well, maybe just one run will be good enough. Um, I'm definitely looking yeah. to break some speeds with this thing. So I'm going to get, once I get it all settled, I'm going to put some GPS on it. I got some adventures coming up. I got my parts in for one of my rigs. I'm going to fix that. And then me, my son, and my buddy, we're going to go do some crawling. Can't do no racing. Uh, but yeah, I don't know, man. I'm just looking for it. 43 is almost here. Who knows? Um, it's a day before while we're recording this. I ain't 43 yet, <laughs> so anything can happen. But uh, yeah, man, I'm just appreciative of everybody that supports us. I'm appreciative of you and of everybody that helps us out and all the guests that have been on this podcast. I can't say it enough. I'm going to stop rambling. Rambo, Nitro is the glory. E-Buggy pays the bills. If you ain't grinding, you're sliding. Max and Lefty, we're out. Have a good day. Thank you for listening to the No Name RC Podcast. We greatly appreciate all the support and love from you, the listeners. Without all of you, none of this is possible. Special thanks to our patrons on Patreon. If you wish to support the podcast further, you can at patreon.com forward slash NNRC podcast. As a patron, you will receive early releases, special content and patron only giveaways also please follow us on facebook instagram and our website www.nnrcpodcast.com remember nitro is the glory but e-buggy pays the bills if you aren't having fun it doesn't make sense and if you ain't grinding you're sliding lefty out Nitro is the glory, Nitro is the glory, Nitro is the glory.